So let's just talk about uh, ideology, really. I love it. It is, the cool thing about this is it's just such a, a great collection of stuff. We have a whole mix of products this time that includes paper, paper products, and uh, metals, and even a couple of, of different tools, if you will. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to try to make a little room. I have this great little backdrop. I got this from, I'm using this for ideology. This is a, a cool marble. This is from Mr. Cup. So uh, if you don't know who Mr. Cup is, I, you should follow him as well. Um, but yeah, I was like, isn't this, this is a good backdrop. This would be good for ideology as well. <laughs> so, okay. I think I'm set up. I've got a little space. I've got little crates on both sides. We're going to talk about the paper first, and then we will go in. Oh, cool. I see Scrapbook Central in the house. I see several retailers in here as well. So hello to all of you guys. Thanks for joining us. We're going to going to go right through uh, the good stuff. So first up, paper. We'll talk about backdrops. Backdrops, these are uh, the ideology version of a paper line. These are 6x10 papers. Uh, we no longer do 12x12s, 8x8s, 9x9s, no paper pads uh, at all. We've kind of totally gone to this size just because I wanted something different, something unique, something that you wouldn't be afraid to cut up. Uh, and that's why I took this departure. And again, shout out to Tracy and the Advances team for uh, supporting it, you know, because we've got Raina in there and raina has got, she's got a strong opinion of how yeah, things should work, does. but she supported this. And I, I do appreciate that. So the thing about uh, the backdrops, I'm going to put the craft sparkle over here. It reflects a lot of light. Uh, we are up to volumes four and five. And so far, fingers crossed, so far we have not discontinued any volumes of backdrops. So I thank you guys uh, very much for supporting backdrops because, you know, the thing about ideology, it stays in the line as long as it sells. And if it doesn't, it gets retired. So it is nice that we're already up to volumes four and five and the fact that you guys are getting it. And again, ideology has already shipped. It is available worldwide. So the thing about backdrops is it's this whole kind of mix of paper and it's very ephemera based. And what we wanted to do different for this release is really focus on something I've always wanted, which was a pack of just neutrals, browns, grays, blacks, whatever. And then Paula was like, we should try to do some color. And I, and I was open to the idea, but I didn't want to just do the same art with a color filter. It was about finding and curating uh, art that really had an authentic color palette. Now, this little snippet that's on the front of backdrops only shows you one side of the papers. There are 24 double-sided papers. So on the back, that's where you get to see really all of the art uh, in backdrops. And we don't make it easy on you. We don't make it to where uh, there's a, a good side and an ugly side. It's like, oh, I don't know which side I want. Well, that's uh, what we're always going for, uh, for backdrops. So volume four, all neutrals. And I'm not going to open the pack of this because you're going to see it on the makes, but really just a, a great assortment of neutrals, everything from wrinkled paper, book covers, ledgers, even these great palettes that you keep seeing. I love this typewriter keyboard, handwriting, just good, good, authentic grunge stuff. So these are great for uh, quick card bases, backgrounds, mini books, all sorts of things, because just that random size of paper allows you to just cut it up and go for it. Backdrops volume five, this is all color base. So you can see that it's got some really great inky papers. They're not the same ink. It's not like we took one pattern and just applied a color. They're all distinctly different. Some are, you know, from a notebook or a book cover. Some are a little grungy ink. Some are little tiny, what we call little ditzy prints, little tiny floral designs. There's great maps. There's amazing typography in here. But I love that now there is a palette of color and a palette that definitely mimics distress. I will say that it certainly mimics that palette. So you can use the papers uh, with your inks. Not too grungy, but it's certainly not clean. I mean, there is a stain on that pink for a reason. So those are the backdrops. And that was really the catalyst for everything else we did uh, in this release. There, that's for sure. So we'll talk about this one because this is the one that kind of uh, we decided to really go for it with this palette. And we started curating all types of different ephemera, ephemera that uh, we find, we purchase, we license, uh, just we gather and gather and gather and create this great assortment. This is the biggest ephemera pack we've ever done. There are 136 pieces in this pack and the value is, is totally worth it. So when you see this pack, I mean, you can see it is chuck full, but here's what we did. And I say we, and that would be Mario last night. Yeah. I said to him, I don't know, maybe it was like nine o'clock at night. And I'm like, Mario, wouldn't it be cool if we could just show how, yeah, how the ephemera is? Away. And there we go. So what we did is took the ephemera out of the pack just to show you really uh, what each color is because 
this is a small little one on the back that, you know, Chris does a great job with the thumbnail, but this is actual size, just stuff right out of the package. So you can see uh, all of these colors. So let me just go through and we'll do it by color. So this is the pink ephemera that's in there. Great assortment of things you can see uh, just from size. I mean, there's some big pieces in this ephemera pack. Again, something that we haven't done. Uh, we'll, we know we will not bring back 12 by 12, Robin. We are on to backdrops. Uh, the whole thing about working with ephemera is that we found that we wanted a whole variety of scale, large, small, all sorts of things. And I think that to me is super important uh, when you're making, because maybe you're making mini books or journals or cards or uh, scrapbook pages and you want to have a variety of scale. So the pink just has different shades of pink or pink accents. It doesn't have to be an entirely uh, pink piece, but this is what we felt uh, had some pink tones. Look at this card. Isn't this beautiful? Oh my gosh, one of my favorites. And so ephemera is uh, just die cut paper, single sided, but great to collage and glue down. Then we have the reds. Take a look at the reds. Ooh, ooh, I love the reds. I love the, the playing cards. There's a great wax seal, some small little labels, uh, some larger labels that you could stamp on, some book covers, alphabets, even these little circles, just a fun mix to create with. Then we go into orange or peach. So you can see a lot of different shades of orange from you know very soft pastels, even to dark, uh, deeper stuff. I just, again, love the mix because it's not like we took the same stuff added color. Each piece is distinctly different as we go through the colors. Take a look at this, the yellow, beautiful. I love this alphabet, these alphabet cards. Again, more florals and botanicals, bird cards. Some are die cut, so some pieces we keep as square if they have a, a beautiful frame to them. Some we, we cut or crop out. Some Chris goes in and actually isolates, like if we, if we see a flower maybe in a, in a card or a postcard. So it takes a lot of work to get it just perfect. And not only that, but of course, the color, right? We want, we want those soft yellows, those vivid yellows, those dirty mustard yellows. We want all of the colors to be balanced in the printing. And that's where, you know, even the manufacturing comes into play. And then greens, take a look at this. So good. Like that little bit of tape on that flash card uh, or the, the dog, the map. There's some postage stamps that you could cut apart. Again, labels. And you'll see that this pack really does offer such a distinct scale of, of ephemera. Yeah, I agree. Like the patience that Chris has when it's like, could you just go in and like extract that thing from the this and to watch him? We call it Chris TV because we do this live uh, with Chris. Um, we'll actually, Paul and I will work with Chris in real time and he'll just share his screen and we just watch him do his magic. So it's really cool. So here we have uh, blues. I love the different shades. I love this dark, deep blue, these pastel blues. And again, it doesn't all have to be solid blue. Even if it has little blue notes to stuff, we put it in that category. So everything will mix and match and you're going to see the, the greatest thing. I, I would agree, Tammy. It's probably my favorite as well. Yes, Marina, it is amazing. Then we kind of go into a, a little deeper blue. We wanted to play into uh, the navies because we saw, you know, this could be considered a little turquoise kind of, there's some teal notes, but this one we really wanted to go with uh, those deeper blues. I love these slide frame pieces, these circle die cuts. You could tell we love this circle so much. We did it three times because it's special and I love those circles. And then we did a smaller one because anytime we had room, uh, Chris is like, oh, let's, let's just put another piece in there. So yeah, he knows how we think, right, Paula? Uh, autograph book, playing card, compass. It's just, we have a lot of fun creating this. And then purple. Now what's interesting to purple, it's not that we weren't fans of purple. It's just when we were looking for ephemera, you know, it was, it was really challenging to find some vintage stuff, but I think what we did find uh, is a beautiful representation of that color. We've got some wonderful florals, some, look at this one, just even down to that ink of that like purpley ink stamp or on the postcard, butterflies, that little calendar, just so many great pieces uh, that we can incorporate. In fact, Stacy even did, that was her ribbon spool. <laughs> and she fooled me because when she saw that, I'm like, oh my gosh, look at that that ribbon. I'm like, that's from our ephemera pack. There's so my gosh. much in that pack. So really much, yeah. Ton. So all of that is in this pack. And I think it's important to see that, right? Because if, you, if you're shopping online or even in the store, that's all you see. Even if you look at the back, you can't really see uh, how big uh, so many pieces are and also how small some of the pieces are. So really great to have a palette to work with of ephemera. Then next up, we have Layers. So the difference between ephemera and layers, ephemera is a, a thinner printed cardstock. This is a coated glossy cardstock, a little bit thicker, uh, designed to layer. 
We've done layers in many different themes, different, different styles. Our most popular one is layers botanical. So what we wanted to do is kind of create a, a complement to that one. So this is layers organic. So it does have a lot of flowers. It's got some birds, butterflies, different stuff that is in botanicals because we want them both uh, to live and coexist. But again, we went in and created some larger pieces. So in the back, I didn't open this one up, but you'll see in the makes, uh, there's, there's beautiful scenes. Like there's a, a cloud sky background. There's some uh, great illustrations in here as well, but also quite a bit of die cut pieces, birds, dragonflies, just all sorts of uh, unique pieces that are more organic not so many botanicals. Rock says that botanicals are a favorite. So yes, if you like that pack, this is a great compliment to it because it really uh, is one of our most popular selling layers. But this is cool because you can collage over it, you can use crayons, you can use uh, distress watercolor pencils over it. Because of its coating, it allows you to manipulate color much, much easier, okay? Then we went into uh, this substrate. And we've done transparencies and ideology before. We have transparencies in the line. And so we wanted to kind of uh, take a spin on that and do a couple things different. So this one is called Transparent Things 2 because we have Transparent Things 1 currently in the line. And this is a four color printed transparency, which means that the art itself, I'll just open the bottom of this package. The, the whole thing about this art is that it, it does have a, a variety of colors, but it is transparent. But even the the open space has maybe some cream. Take a look at the die cut, like die cut birds. Look at these floral pieces. Uh, there's all sorts, there's even tiny little labels. I love these, like the dictionary. Like look at how it's cut. It's even wonky cut transparency. So it doesn't have a, a crazy bleed. So the great thing about this is that it does allow you to overlay. You can glue that down with collage medium, glossy accents. You can use a tiny attacher, you can sew it. There's a lot of different ways that you can attach these, but transparent things, that's going to be more of a color printed transparency, all right? Then we will go on to transparent layers. Now transparent layers, what makes them different is that yes, it has color printing, but all of these pieces have a full transparent uh, layer. So that allows you to, to go in and put these or layer them over things. So I'll take them out of the package. So on the back, just to represent it, it's kind of cream, but wherever you see cream on the back is actually clear. So the cool thing about these is that you can totally layer and it creates a window. But instead of just doing a plain window, there's a little bit of text in there, really, really faint on these pieces. So you can see maybe it's a little bit of handwriting. So these circles you'll see from the makes, they are sized to fit uh, the curio clock, but you can use circles for many other things. Then we have just some larger rectangle pieces. So again, you've got that cool color piece, but then just a little bit of typography to add some interest. Very, very cool to use uh, in a book or a card, even as, even as a shaker window. So for example, on this palette, it just has those little numbers there. Here's another one, the brush stroke. Look at those, so good, so, so good. And this one, look at that with the flowers. So these could be cut up, they can be used a lot of different ways. This is another favorite of mine, I love this. This little frame, it's like from a storybook. Just beautiful, so many great things. So that's the difference between transparent things, which would be fully colored transparencies. And then you have transparent layers, which would be a, a colored element with some text layered over the top that you could then layer on top of something else. So those are the difference. And I think it is important to see it. That's why I like to go through the product on live because you can see it, uh, especially if you don't get to get into a store or shop or anything like that. Okay, next up in, uh, in a layer element are going to be layer frames. So this is gonna be back to that same paper material uh, as layers, they are coated. But what's really cool about these frames, there are, are three different sizes of frames, but all of these are sewn. They all have stitching. So we've left all the threads in one corner. And so yes, there is stitching that goes all the way around the frame. We did this neutral thread because it's a coated paper. You can take your Distress ink or Oxide, go over the top, wipe it off, and stain the thread. So the thread could be uh, brown if you inked it and then wiped it off, or red inked and wiped it off, and the color will stay on the thread itself. So the cool thing, these are all collaged. So you can use it with ephemera, you can use it with paper, you can use it with transparencies, paper dolls, anything, and it just gives you a nice aperture. This could be a card front. Uh, again, or this could be a shaker pane, or this could go into a uh, junk journal, but I love the fact that we just added those, uh, that little stitching detail and left the threads on there. Really cool, because maybe you don't want to do that. That's the other thing. Maybe you don't want to go in and do that. All right, 
So next, a favorite, definitely a favorite from Makers. Um, this was inspired by actually an, an Etsy artist that, that we saw and we licensed her work. And then uh, we, it was only one color and we're like, hey, you know what, we, we really need, Paula goes, this would be great in every color. And I was like, okay, this is gonna be on you. So um, Paula went in, it was her, her task to go in and find all of these elements to do these collage strips. And I think it was one of the last skews we did because it was like, I wasn't looking forward to it. Chris probably wasn't, but it actually worked out really, really well. The cool thing about collage strips, there are 30 strips. And let me just show you the strips. We went along the same mindset of ephemera where they, they come in different, different colors, all the different colorways. What's cool about these strips, so we'll start with, with pink, is that you can, they're a six inch strip, so you can use it already done. You can cut anywhere you want and you've got great interest. So this could be an element for a card. You can layer them up to create a patchwork and you'll see in the first make it is a patchwork. Uh, and the nice thing about working with this is that you can kind of mix things up however you choose. The layouts are different. So it's not like we have the same size boxes going all the way across. We, we shuffle around different layouts, which I think is, is very cool. Uh, and just Chris went in and just cut these little snippets of everything. So yeah, I think they turned out absolutely beautiful. I love a little touch of photos and it just creates some cool things. So here you can see like that was that butterfly cover from Ephemera. So we took elements from Ephemera and backdrops and created these paper strips. So again, they're designed to be cut up. Some of them even have little clippings from our sticker book where we chose little clippings that are some of our favorites. And there's Ephemera from, you know, current and past. So here's the red set. And there's just different amount of strips depend on color. We didn't do the same amount for every color. It just depends on like how the layout really worked. There's orange, love that, the orange and the peach, that little bit of botanicals and just cool to see these different little snippets. So they're a lot of fun. And I wanted to share that because when you see the whole entire uh, pack, it's really cool. So here's just a couple of yellow strips. So again, we're going orange, just a couple of yellow. Then we go into uh, the blues. See, they're just, aren't they beautiful? So good. Uh, some greens. I love that. We do love our greens. And I think just adding these different unique pieces, it does add a whole level of interest. These, you can just imagine how many individual pieces had to be found, isolated, cropped, and placed. It was, it was a labor of love, but it, they turned out great. Here's purple, a couple purple strips. And then we even have neutral in this pack. So I definitely wanted to have some brown collage strips, and you could tell Obviously those are my favorite, but I do love them. Very, very cool. So those are the collage strips that are in that pack. Um, you might see them where it only looks like two strips in the pack because you know, as these travel, they like to condense, but really that's what you're getting in the pack, all 30 of those. Okay, next, oh gosh, this one is, this one is a favorite too. I say I have a lot of favorites. Uh, there's so many great people on social media um, that, that share what they love. Uh, just so freely. And so uh, I met this guy on social that collects photos and he allowed us to use his photos in the SKU. So thanks Oliver for that. It's just very, very cool. Uh, so, you know, with photos, a lot of times we buy them, we acquire them. We like to purchase the photos that we use. Um, but, but this guy really was so gracious. And so we were able to create a whole new cast and a whole new SKU. Now you may be familiar with photo booth, photo booth, uh, have been these uh, great little photo booth strips that we have in the ideology line of all of these little snapshot type of things. This is called Photomatic and Photomatic is just uh, based off a larger footprint of a photo booth, okay? Just a, a much larger one. The cool thing about this is because they're larger, sometimes you get great background, uh, just so many different details. And uh, like the other SKUs, some of them are just going to be uh, black and white. Some might be sepia, some might have a little tinting on there but these are absolutely fabulous. So you'll see in the makes when you see these photos, just understand the difference in scale. They are much larger. And so that does create a whole different uh, foundation that we can work with on these photos. So absolutely, absolutely love these because having a, a whole different cast of people to work with just is a lot of fun. So that is Photomatic. Then another photo skew we have, this Snapshots Volume 2. So just like Snapshots Volume 1, they are just black and white photos with a large edge that you can go in with your decal trimmer if you have one and you can cut that. You can tint these because these are done on the same coated cardstock as layers. What's unique about Snapshots 2, these have a bit more theme to it, if you will. I mean, there's graduation, there's the beach, there's like 4th of July, boating, 
Uh, there's all sorts of different themes or, or unique uh, backdrops. We weren't sure if snapshots were actually going to stick around, so I'm glad that uh, we at least uh, are able to get another volume out of it before they start going away because, you know, this is one of those that, you know, you, there's a lot of stuff to use in there, and if, if you don't use it, we lose it. So I do love the fact that we were able to get a second volume uh, and have volume one and two coexist in the line. So that is snapshots volume two. There's so many to go through. If I open this pack, we're in trouble. You'll see him in the makes. <laughs> you will. Um, all right. So next up, we'll talk about uh, just some papers and then we'll go into the, the metal trinkety bits. So this is a great embellishment skew. These are quote chips. We've done quote chips for years. We've done them seasonally. We've done them uh, black and white. What we wanted to do a little bit different is create labels. Think how are makers using uh, the embellishments? And many of you are using labels for a statement for your art piece. Maybe it's gonna go on a canvas or a journal or even a card. And so what we wanted to do is, is create a skew that had a ton of quotes. These are all different from one another. They're not, there are no repeats in the quotes. There are 48 pieces on the quote chips. This is a chipboard, so it is a coded printed chipboard. If you, if you follow Dina Wakely, you know that she actually rips off that top layer. Uh, I'll, I'll show you that because I have some here. But the cool thing about these, you can use them, they're standalone, it's a standalone skew, so you can just use them uh, by themselves because it's a thick chipboard. But if you have the ideology label frame, so these are in the line, these are just some great, look like book plates that already have the hardware. It's a flat backed frame. So it has a detailing on the front, but it's not recessed, so it's easy to glue. But we designed these quote chips to fit this skew. So for example, if you, if you wanted to put that on a make, this piece is going to fit <laughs> right inside. So they just kind of pop right in. So you don't have to do any cutting. So you'll see a lot of makers use uh, the label and the quote on their make, and that's really how it was done, just by gluing it down, because then you have a complete flat back to this. Because it's coated, you can do your inking, you can do your grunging. Uh, but what I was saying is, if you wanted to put this on a card and you didn't want the chipboard, you can just go in and take that top layer. Normally, I like to start it with a craft pick just to really get a, a nice hold of that first layer. There we go. I got a good hold of it. And then you just peel it off so you can get that. I, like, I even like that fuzzy chipboard uh, just as a texture for another piece. But see, then you have a nice coated, well, almost like a sticker. Just put some glue on it and stick it down. So you can still use these on cards without the thickness, just by peeling off that top layer because, well, you can hear it. It's that layer material, so it comes off really nice. So that was a great idea that Dina had. So like tiny attacher and yeah, cool stuff. But still, I like, I like the roughed up chipboard too. All right, so those are quote chip labels. And remember, they work with label frames. So just a cool thing. Okay, that's very nice. I, I love... I'm staying pretty organized, Mario, huh? I'm like, I'm cleaning as I go, because I said to myself, like, usually I have stuff just kind of thrown everywhere, and then I can't find it when I need it. Okay, could you, uh, on the top of that shelf, uh, under there, there should be a white piece of cardstock uh, with the collage paper on there. So we have two new collage papers. We have uh, photographic and palette. And if you're not familiar with collage paper, it's gonna be under on that top shelf, that under. No, right? There, do you see the white? No, no, if you lift that stuff up, yeah. Is there a white piece of cardstock there? Two of them? No? Okay. I don't know what I did with it then. Oh, well, I'll find it. What are you looking for? Can I'm looking for the white collage papers that I did. Yeah, I may have moved them. Let me just take a quick peek. Is it sitting at the top? No. Uh, can you look on the top of the binders? I see them. No, nope. put your hand down under the shelf. There you go. Thanks. Oh my gosh, you got yeah. stuff I know where it is. There you go. Okay. Woo. There we go. Mario's like this. He's grabbing all the shelves. I'm like, no, up, down. All right. Okay. Collage paper. So collage paper is, I do where, I do, Diane. I know where everything is. It's, it. it's crazy. Yeah, and then when he's, his hand's not going there, I'm like, no, like if I could just grab it. Okay. So collage paper is a printed tissue, but what makes this tissue unique, and I don't know if you can hear it, I'll get it close to my mic. It's like a little crunchy tissue. What's cool about this is that you have the ability to use collage medium or gel medium on it, and it doesn't dissolve. Like if you were trying, and, and I know a lot of people like you can use a hack where you stamp on tissue paper and yes, but some tissue papers dissolve when you, when you use glue. Like if you were doing napkins, it would just dissolve. The cool thing about collage paper is that it will dissolve with water, meaning if you wanted to contour something, you could take a wet brush and it would dissolve the paper so you don't have to go in and cut it. But yet when you use glue, collage medium or Mod Podge or any gel medium, uh, it 
it maintains its integrity. The cool thing about these two, one is the palette. Now you've probably seen these color blocks on everything because we absolutely love this vintage palette. And then we also have photographic, which is just a bunch of different snapshots that we, uh, that we use and some typography that you can add imagery to your piece. Now, collage paper, there are six yards of collage paper, but what we did different this time, and this is the first time we've done it, I'll start with the palette. Usually this is our repeat size for collage paper. So when we have it made, this is our repeat. It's probably about a 15 inch repeat. Sometimes we get to 18 inch repeat, but you'll see on this one, like look at that great detail. So you can pick all these different colors uh, and you can collage it over something because once you add glue to this, this white becomes translucent. So you'll see it used on uh, fabrics and all sorts of cool things, okay? The other part is this. This one is where, when I talk to Tracy, it's like, well, we wanna do this photo skew, but we don't want this. We want a lot of photos. So the cool thing about photographic is this is the repeat, which means all of these photos and all of this typography, these are all different before they repeat again which is very cool. Now you can use it by itself, like you can just take it and we've designed it where it's collage, where you could just collage the whole thing, or you can go and kind of cut out little bits or little elements that you might want, and you can collage it over paper, fabric, all sorts of other things, and again, this becomes transparent. So when you see how this is used from the maker, this is how it started, because sometimes it'll mess with your mind. Like you might see this on fabric and be like, how did they print that on fabric? They didn't, it was on collage paper that uh, was actually then transferred onto fabric. So that is collage paper. Now, uh, another paper skew that's just a little, a little different, but I wanted to do this is, this is craft stock sparkle. And you might be like, this is really random. You did all this vintage stuff and now you got glitter. Well, we've done deco sheets, uh, usually it's seasonal. And deco sheets very cool because it's got just a little bit of sparkle to it, but it's been a vinyl that you have to peel off and stick down. And truth is, when we were sampling that, the factory sent me a sample of that stuff printed on craft paper. And I said to Tracy, I'm like, I didn't even know this could go on paper. The cool thing about this product is that it's, it is inked. So this is completely smooth. There is no, although it looks so sparkly and glittery, there is no texture to this at all. It is smooth and it is craft paper. So it is printed on craft, which means because it's paper, we can stamp on it, we can ink on it, we can do all sorts of different things to it. And I love that we can get it in vintage colors. So it's not bright silver, yellow gold, they're actually a tarnished silver and a tarnished gold. You can tear it, you can see that craft core, so we can rip right through this stuff. So we could uh, punch it if we wanna do a paper punch or you can use thinlets. It's great for details eye cutting because you don't have all those little glitter fragments, but also for embossing. So you could take like an embossing folder right, a 3D folder, emboss it, and then because it's inked, you can sand it. So I took the sanding disc on my blending tool, just went, sanded the top, and then inked over this side, just so you can see the difference of how you can actually tarnish that sparkle cardstock even more. That's what makes this stuff really cool, is that it is die cuttable, embossable, sandable, inkable, and it's still craft paper. So it's not a glitter paper. There's no glitter uh, to come off, it's printed. Beautiful, isn't it? I absolutely, absolutely love it. So again, this is not glitter paper, this is a printed paper. So if your printer could take this thickness of cardstock, it's 100 pound, then yes, you could probably print on it. Yeah, you can get it through your printer. But yeah, cause it's just cardstock, very cool. Sparkle craft stock, love it. Okay, now we'll get into the trinkety bits cause I do love trinkety bits, you guys know that. I love little charms and, and embellishments and how can you not? That's, that's what makes it really fun. So in ideology, you know through the years, we've we found so many great little, little trinkets and I think that that is what I absolutely love about working uh, with the Advantis team is that we can find vintage stuff and they can replicate it whether we wanna make it bigger, smaller, anything. So this first one, these are adornments foliage. They're just tiny little leaves, uh, leaves that have great detail, very sculpted leaves that, that you'll see tucked in uh, here and there little charms. Paula really wanted these just to add things. So I can't wait to see her makes and see where she put all the leaves because I have not seen the makes in detail and I cannot wait. It's going to be like, I got to, I got to go on the search. I have. <laughs> I know Mario has. Mario's unpacked them. He's got so, he, he's I've so good. Them. I've chased them around it's town. been so nice. This one, this is adornments ornate. You can see 
so much beautiful detail in this, small little flourishes. We've done some larger uh, flourishes before in Ideology, but these are much more delicate and detailed, this wonderful little frame, this beautiful floral. So again, it's gonna be really interesting to see how makers use these random things, random elements. Then we've got word plaques, a favorite of mine, because I wanted to do stuff that's really big. I'm gonna grab a word plaque from here. I think I, I have it right off to the side. Let's take one. Oh, here we go. So this one, okay, this is normally uh, the size of our word plaques, short. And what we wanted to do is just create something bigger, right? Almost double, a little less than double. But the great thing about this is that if you're doing larger makes, maybe you're doing it setter tag or a vignette or a canvas or even a journal, you can add these great plaques either down the side or the spine of a book, because these are great on the outside spine of a journal or across the front. So we have live a story worth telling, life is meant for adventure, make this journey your own, and a compendium of curiosities, which yes, was my book title uh, for the books I did with Advantis, but it also just is a great uh, statement for a gathering of curious ideas. So I do love these. I love that we have that big size. So it's important to note if you've had word plaques before and you get these, they're, they're big. I think they're cool. size is perfect. Yeah, I love it. I think they're, they're cool. And then we go big we go really tiny. So these are word tags and these are very, very tiny. I mean, you could see like maybe a little bit bigger than a pencil eraser. So what we have here is we have a couple of icons, little circle ones on the top. So we've got the heart, the star, XO, and two. And again, it's got that raised uh, metal design so you could rub color, paint, or crayon in there. And then we have these tiny little tags, happy, lost, story, wish, love, found, hope, and lucky. You can tie these onto things. You'll see them tied to so many uh, little tiny trinkety things. I love them. So we're always thinking about scale. It's not like, oh, let's just do canvas. It's like, no, let's do big stuff. Let's do small stuff. Really important. So then we have photo frames. And photo frames are really inspired by the whole photomatic thing. Um, I actually, gra I'll grab my photomatic. It's right over here. I have a real one, a vintage one. Okay. This is what a photomatic is. This is a real vintage one. So it came out of a machine uh, and it came in this metal frame. Mine's a little rusty and crusty. I didn't do that. I love that photo too. Uh, but this is, this is just a pin that was on it, but this is what a, one of those looks like. And I really love the look of it and wanted to replicate that. So that's where these frames came in. So we wanted to do frames. So these large ones will fit the photomatic, but the small ones will fit photo booth. So you can put that frame on, but you can also use them in any direction and you don't have to use them with a photo. You can now have a metal frame that you can paint, alter, uh, maybe collaging, do florals, do botanicals. It's just nice because um, if you don't always want an ornate or pretty frame, it gives you a, a great foundation to work from. They're not very thick, so you can see they're fairly thin, but they have that, that great little rise and fall, so it grabs onto any colorant that you do. So I, I love that. I agree, Susie. It's one of my, it's one of my favorites too. Just so inspiring to see the, the metal trinkety, trinkety stuff. All right. Then this is another trinkety thing. So let me just be clear on this one. This is the only SKU in the release right now that is not available or not shipping. This one uh, was just a delay because I wanted it to be perfect. And this will be available mid to end of April. So next month. So keep in mind, all of the other ideology stuff is shipped. All of the other ideology stuff is out there, but this one SKU figure stands uh, will not be uh, shipping until mid to late April, which is, you have plenty of other stuff to play with. So there you go. But here's what's cool about figure stands. Figure stands are these three-dimensional metal elements. There's a top hat, there's a star, and a pointy finger. Three-dimensional you'll see in the makes, which means that design is on both sides all the way around. So the finger could point either direction. And then they have these little stands. I just had this idea of creating charms that you can set on a shelf. And I love the hat stand idea. So all of these have a little hole in the bottom. So you just slide it right onto the stand. You can turn it however you want it to, to go and then you can glue the stand down. So it is one of my favorite embellishments. They're so fun, Dude, but love I, I love this. It was like, and, and this like Tracy, again, so patient because I kept changing it and changing. It. I even changed one of the designs last minute. She goes, you keep changing it. It's not gonna be ready with the other stuff. I'm like, that's okay. I'd rather it be right than ready. That's the way I see it. So it is worth the wait, but I just wanted to point that out, okay? Then we have a few other elements. We've got these new large fasteners and you might be rolling your eyes going, well, thank you, Captain Obvious for Brad's. Listen, if you've got a source for Brad's, you do you. For me, I've never found Brad's that are the same antique finishes of the rest of ideology, 
Yes, I've seen an antique silver or gold, but not in these finishes, not in this grunge of this uh, antique copper, antique brass, and antique silver. So I wanted to do these large fasteners for a reason, and that is because this hammer came back, this tiny, tiny texture hammer. And I say came back because we had the texture hammer years ago with grunge. So I wanted to reimagine uh, a hammer. It is tiny. It is a tiny little hammer, but it packs a punch. So one side, it's got these bumps. The other side is smooth, so you can hammer in your tack nails, or you can go in and dent any of your uh, metal embellishments. It's got this little kind of foam squishy handle. It's super tiny. It is meant for craft applications, not building a house, not refinishing your deck, but it's very cool because you can take the fasteners. So these are the long fasteners, and then these are the new large fasteners. So the difference is really the, the legs of the fastener are the same, but it's just, it gives you a bigger head diameter. This is a quarter inch, this is an eighth inch. But when you tap it with the texture hammer, look what it does. Look how it just dents that metal perfect. So smooth, texture hammer, smooth, texture hammer, smooth, texture hammer. But you're gonna see the texture hammer used on a lot of makes. It is great. So if you didn't have a texture hammer or couldn't get one when it first came out, here you go. And even if you have one, it's just tinier and easier to, this is to tough use. Little hammer, right? I mean, it I is. Put it through its paces. We wanted to put it through its paces. So I do love that uh, the, the hammer is back. Now, again, if you remember the other hammer, it didn't stick around long before it was retired. So I'm not saying that it's going away, but I'm saying if, if history repeats itself on the tool, hopefully we get more than at least a year on it. Then the final thing before we get into the makes is uh, a new structure. You know I love glass structures. We've done uh, display domes, cork vials, all sorts of things out of glass. This was inspired uh, by my friend Tersh, Sky Bambi. She was on travel, I think she was in Australia, and she was in an antique shop and panned across, I saw it on, on her Instagram, this globe that I had not seen the shape of before. And I know it exists out there, I've just not seen it. Uh, and I love the idea that it was this arched dome. So this is the reliquary dome. And the thing about this, it is, it is glass, but look at its design. It's a wonderful arch dome uh, with the thick cork base, so you can still work in it like uh, all of the other SKUs, but it, it's a really nice thick glass. But the beauty of this is unlike a traditional cloche or a rounded dome that distorts what you put in, the reliquary dome, because it has that flat appearance, allows whatever you put in to be totally visible. So whether you're doing ephemera, layouts, layers, photos, anything, it's as if you kind of have a screen. And I think that that's just fabulous. And I've seen these mostly in uh, antique shops overseas, like in Europe, this is, it's a very common thing, but not necessarily for sale. Well, it is for sale, but you know, we're talking hundreds, if not thousands of dollars for vintage ones. They used them for taxidermy, so they were much bigger. I've just not seen anything this design, uh, this size before. And if you have, Please share it, I'd love to see that. But this is the Reliquary Dome. Absolutely cool, cool, cool structure. So that is the Ideology 2023 lineup. We're gonna get into the makes. I'm gonna hand this stuff off to Mario. Thanks, Mario. You're welcome. Just because I'm gonna need room for the makes. I get to dive right in. Not bad, not bad. So yeah, I love our display dome too. That's a, a wonderful little, little cloche. Okay, we ready to go. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna, we're gonna go through the makes. A shout out to the makers who make for ideology. So following the live, uh, there will be a, a blog post that goes up that has all of the makers identified, uh, tagged, linked, so you can follow the makers because many of the makers share their makes uh, following the, the live. They, some of them do them that, that day, that week, o over the next couple months. Some of them do uh, tutorials. Some of them do uh, classes. Some of them even kit up some of their makes. So it's just important that you follow the makers, go to timmoltz.com, click the maker page and follow it. So this first make, this is from Paula. Yes, it is Paula. Uh, and she used the vignette display panel, probably my favorite structure in the vignette line. Um, I hope that it can stick around. It almost went away this year, but uh, we saved it for another year. I just love it because it's a perfect, it's just a perfect square panel to work with. You can work on the inside. You can also work on the outside. And it was really meant just to display stuff. So here, uh, Paula created this make using, you guessed it, the collage strips. And I love how she added that stitch detail. Uh, the collage strips, remember, you don't have to use the entire strip, but you can. So here she just used the strip and then used part of another one. Use the strip, part of another one. So depending on the measurement of your make, you can customize it with those strips. I love that transparency here that circular compass. There we can see the photomatic, look at that frame. Mm -mm. Oh, look at that little, there's one of those ornate adornments. 
wonderful. There's our, our word plaque. You can see just having uh, that size of it. And then you'll see a lot of hammering. I can spot that in, a, in an instant because when you hammer the fasteners, you can actually go in with your colorant and it will stick in there, whether it's paint or crayon. And then there are the layers. So what a beautiful make. I just see just, it's so nice to have that vintage palette to work from, that little bit of color, uh, and then see how everything comes together. So what's nice also about the collage strips, you don't have to do the thinking. You can just stick them on down. So um, off you go. Beautiful make, P. Love it. So color, of course, was really important. And so uh, it was important that the makers also kind of celebrated uh, working with the color. So this make, Sharon created this one. And Sharon is mostly a card maker, but I love how she makes for ideology because she takes her, her card making guru skills and applies it to ideology. And I think it's so impactful that people understand that ideology, yes, it is about uh, vignettes and, and panels and canvas and mixed media, but it's also about creating so many cool things just out of papers. So this is just using one of the uh, vignette card files. This is one that we launched uh, and I love just the, the hardware on there, but she created this beautiful rainbow of art cards. So if I just take out, I'm just gonna take out a section because I think that'll be easier. Uh, love the ability to layer. So here you can just take that transparency, it's fun, and just layer it in your uh, card file. But take a look at just these great cards. So we also have the cards uh, cut to fit this box, or you can just cut your own, but you can see adding that little bit of tinting, and you'll see the importance of having the colorful ephemera that you can coordinate, the colorful backdrops, how everything just comes together. Oh, look at that tiny little tag. So cute, little pocket. Yeah, little stitch scraps that she inked because you can ink the stitch scraps up a little bit. Look at that. Oh, look at that. So that is the sparkle craft stock that she has alcohol inked. I'm guessing alcohol inked to turn it pink because remember you have gold and silver and yes, that will be an inkable paper. So I love how she, uh, good job, Sharon, inked the paper uh, to match the color. So you could take that silver alcohol ink and then that's a, the Sizzix abstract elements. Cool little, cool little piece because you know with these components, you can create cards, you can create pockets, you can do all sorts of things with it, or you can just layer a piece. So you can take the ephemera and go, you know what, I'm good with that. That to me is what's so magical about ideology, is just the ability to, to piece and layer, do a little tinting. Yes, We're gonna flip these, love it. See, and repetition is also key. You'll see a lot of, you know, I just noticed that from the pink to the red. That's the other beauty of creating something like this. Some people think it's too daunting. It's like, hey, if you create a foundational pattern of like, this one's gonna have a charm, this one's gonna be a pocket, this one's gonna be a card, and just repeat it. Look at that, a little heart, cute, the ephemera. And then you have a card. I just see, and I love, I love these photomatics because it's just, it's such a larger photo. It's just beautiful, beautiful to work on. And having that ephemera where you can cut and layer some pieces uh, are, are big foundational pieces and others are sculpted. And then you can see all those quote chips in there. So cool, see, another one. Aren't those, those little tiny tags are so cute. See, rubbing in some color really makes a difference. You can use paint or distress crayon. And I love these tags, right? So the tags, you know, they look like they've been inked, but they're just backdrops. I say just, but that's what's cool about it. So you've got the inky side or the printed side. So even if you were just gonna use it on cards, then you don't even do any inking, which seems which seems shocking. Okay, get this in, there we go. Put it back in the file. I'm looking through my phone. Another cool card, little ephemera. See, detail, detail, detail. And I also love, like, look how she's got that collage paper, the palette used on the outside and the inside, just to kind of tie everything together. So that collage paper can go over wood, fabric, really anything. That's good, all right. Let's go through this other stack. We'll, we'll, then we'll make this one a little quicker because again, these makers will share details on, on their blogs or social. But there we have yellow. Look at that, happy. So fun. I think those, those shapes are really great and I love all the different colors of uh, that sparkle just by adding alcohol ink. That's cool. Look at all the stitching details. See, so much sewing. They get out the sewing machine and off you go. But I really love how Sharon just used the piece. Like I said, we have those bigger pieces and just having those larger elements. I also love that where uh, that quote chip, because it's, it's a neutral color, you can ink over it, or you can do embossing glaze. You can do a lot of different things to add some color to it. Beautiful. It's so cool. It's just so cool to see ideology and color. It makes me, it makes me smile. Because I would have never thought ideology would have this much color 
ever. And so to do it all, I think it's done uh, with such a, a vintage style or aesthetic. I think that's just beautiful. Wonderful. Oh, yeah. If you saw the chat, for those following, uh, Sharon said a blog post is coming later. It's really good. Wonderful. Look at these colors. So much detail, Sharon. I love that. And the stitch scraps, like such a, such a great addition. Just taking your stuff and using it. This is also a good thing to do for like leftovers if you cut apart backdrops and you have leftover pieces that you can go in and create that. It's cool. Love that. Really nice. And then some purple. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, I love that. See, isn't that a good quote? Gratitude turns what we have into enough. I mean, I say I love that like I'm surprised, but there were so many quotes. Fabulous make, Tron. Oh, see, look at that right at the end. Oh, I'll put them. No, no, I've you. got I it. I know these things. I've got it. It was right there. Just <laughs> fell right out of the middle. Beautiful. Cool make. But see, I also love that because, again, many makers, like, you could you could get a vignette card file and just start kind of building and kind of going and getting, 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 and just absolutely amazing. All right. Cool. Moving on, we're going to just talk about how, how ideology has just been used, different colors for different things. So Paula created this make. Uh, this is a vignette box, but this is the square box. So it's kind of similar to a panel, but these boxes are, are much deeper, but they make a great art piece. So you'll see a lot of makers work from the inside, but don't forget, you can always use vignettes and use the back of this. So here you can see the collage paper used on canvas or duck cloth. Duck cloth is a very thick woven canvas. So you can see here how beautiful that collage paper is. And this is what I was saying, that it's going to kind of blow your mind because when you look at it with a textured fabric, you think, well, that looks like it's printed right on the fabric. But that's the beauty of collage paper. You, if When you do it right, when you use enough of the collage medium uh, as your base layer and your top layer, that white paper in collage paper becomes translucent. And it's just absolutely fabulous to see uh, how that creates a cool backdrop of, of the canvas. And then I love this. So this, oh, this is a snapshot cut out. So Paula did, that's some serious cutting, P. Serious busted cutting in there. And then tinting, I love how Paula always tints the paper dolls, and in this case, the snapshots. Uh, and then just using layers, ephemera, and I love the detail of the strings. And these are the ideology tack nails. So these are those tiny little nails that kind of look like little hand forged nails, but they hammer into things perfectly. And with our tiny texture hammer, it's easy to build. And then we've got our quote chip. What a cute make, right? So good. Love all those colors. I love how everything ties in with those colors. Super cohesive. All right. Then we have this little book. So Marlies created this book. It's a little junk journal, just creating a, a lot of cool things with tags. And I always love how makers just kind of do their own style when it comes to creating and being, I agree Zoe. I love, I say that to Paul all the time. I'm like, I love the string. I do, I love the string. Um, so Marlies's book just uses a bunch of different papers. You can make one with tags. This is just put together with the mini book rings, ideology mini book rings. I love the photomatic frame on the front, a little bit of crackle underneath that photomatic. There's one of the new uh, adornments with the foliage, a little bit of Sizzix die cutting in there. You can see a little bit of that craft sparkle. So what's nice about that, it's almost like you have to point it out because it's not glittery because people say it was like glitter paper. You could see it isn't. It just adds a little bit of like delicate sparkle. But I love just seeing all of these layers. Now, I, I never know what opens, what pulls out, but well, probably not. Oh yeah, maybe this one. Oh yeah, let me just, oh, there's a clip. That's why I says if it's clipped, I probably wouldn't remove it. There's a little clip. There we go. So now we can slide that out of the page. So here we can see uh, a lot of the backdrops, the ephemera, there's a little die cut piece. This is one of the transparent things too. See that little bird? It just gives a little shine, that little label, also transparency. Keep in mind, there's a remnant rub on there. I just saw that. So if you wanna add imagery to the transparencies, rub-ons are going to be way better than stamping because it's going to give you that great opacity uh, that adheres to that surface. Yeah, you can see right here even, even closer. So this label, that's again from Transparent Things too, but the evidence, the little moth that sealed that is from Ideology Remnant Rub. So really clever, Marley. It's important to remember uh, when you're putting that on that you could add those pieces. A little bit of mummy cloth. I talk about that every Halloween because people love to layer that. And yeah, I love the interaction. I always, I always say when it comes to little books, I think it was just because one time I did rip somebody's book apart and I've probably never gotten over it. Uh, but here you can see, again, little pockets where you can create uh, little, 
little inclusions, cards, tags. I love seeing the layers because when you're creating a book like this, remember not every page has to be the same height. So you get the reveal where you can just take a card out. And because we've got all that wonderful art and different colors, we can kind of create that, that rainbow book, if you will. I think that's cool. Oh, and then these are, you can see here this tag, these are ideology salvage tags. So we sell a whole pack of uh, different printed tags. So a great foundation to, and the tags are double-sided in the salvage tag. So perfect for a book. I love how uh, we've got that opening of that, that envelope, a little transparency in there. See that leaf that was printed on the transparency. Love that die cut element. Looks like a little doily. Just so many great layers and details, right? Every little thing. So now let's see. I'm going to, oh, see, I shouldn't have taken that clip off. <laughs> oh, that's just me. See, as soon as I take the clip off, then we have a piece that falls off. That's just how it works. I'm going to put it here for you, Marlies, because that's where, I don't know where it went. So what's cool about pieces, especially as we get into color, and you're going to see from some of the other makes, is that it does give you the ability to really create a color story, right? take elements, whether it's from a collage strip, whether it's from layers organic, whether it's from ephemera, whether it's from backdrop, and you could tell an entire color story uh, or you can mix and match on the colors. There we can see the stitch frames. I love those layer frames. See just that great detail of stitching and just having the thread there. Time saving the fact that it's already stitched. So cool just to have all of those little pieces. And tiny attacher, also another great thing, but the beauty of Having all of these elements in especially different scale is that when you do build, not everything is massive, but not everything is tiny. It allows you to kind of mix and match. Just beautiful. What a cool book, Marlies. See, it just sits up there, all the colors. I do. I love things that are wonky and fun. All right. So color can also have a little touch of vintage. So Vicky created this vignette. So this is a vignette tray. So here you can see the neutral backdrops, volume four use, because there's some with big typography. So I love that it's for skill and amusement only. And I love how she did just kind of a, a carnival scene. There are some tiny lights in here. Now there are two sets and Vicky's watching, so I'm sure she'll tell us why there's two. So if I turn on one, it lights up these tubes. So these are, those are the test tubes we did for Halloween. Sadly, they're not coming back, but I do love those glass test tubes. And then I love how they're painted, but this creates kind of, uh, the light up so it lights up those but then there's another because see there's two things of tiny lights back here And the other one is labeled ticket and then that just kind of lights up almost like the winner So it's as if it's like a little game, but if you get it in here, you're the winner So maybe that's why there's two separate sets, but if, you know, you could light them all up, but I think that's pretty cool Very very clever and I love the detail like look at this vintage dart. Oh my gosh, just that It's like I love the dart, but here the transparencies and and Vicky did this I think a couple Halloweens ago there's remnant rubs on this transparency but she takes a wood burning tool and just kind of burns it and melts it and creates those little charred out areas and then when you look at the top look at him we've got that that grit that's a photo booth so there's the smaller frame there's a little tiny tags look at these little stands so yes you can shorten the figure stands if you want uh, it is a it's a metal kind of an alloy so you could take wire cutters and you can you can cut that. There's the pointy finger. I knew she would use the pointy finger. I love that. The metal stars, that's part of ideology. And I love the little touch of paint. Oh, there's a little dog. That's from, I think, a keepsakes adornment. That's one that's been retired. And then I think some of the game pieces are from uh, baseboard, junk drawer. And then also some of the ephemera and that ticket from the ticket book. There's so many different elements of ideology just packed in. But see, when you see it, what's nice about those transparencies, so there's a little transparent layer, is that you get to utilize it. And you can take pieces from older collections and put it all together. That's the magic of uh, working with this. I do love how these test tubes light up. So whether she, I just think that's, see, lose, win. Very cool. Excellent make. So again, that would be incorporating color, some of the color elements that we just did in this launch with your love of vintage. So I don't want you to think like, Oh, okay, you know, he's opened up the bag of Skittles now and it's just going to be rainbow everything. No, it's color, but it's color that you can also add to uh, a lot of vintage elements. So this next one, this is a vignette that Emma created. I love this uh, vignette, this divided box. It's got all these different compartments that you can create. Again, we've got, it's fun how the makers use uh, those backdrops with the bold typography for the outside of pieces. If you take a look here, it's got some cool hardware heads all the way around. I love that, Emma. I love the, the hardware, mini hardware there. Some of the, the skinny design tape. 
love having just a, those large, those large word bands. So cool. I'm just I'm trying to look at the light. See, uh, don't you I haven't seen it before. Look at the detail of those gears. Yummy. And the little bottles. There's a laboratory. That's part of the everyday line. Probably not for long. That's that one's going to be going away. That glass cue. I love the cork vials. And then this one has a little lantern. Yep, with a tiny light in it. So this is an ideology lantern. There's a little tiny light in the back with just a single light. Because remember on tiny lights, you can cut off what you don't need and you can light that up. But I love how, I mean, just look how that makes that beautiful piece glow. And then on the bottom, there's a little bookshelf. There's one of the figure stands with the star, uh, some pen nibs in there, a little tiny clip, all these little rolled documents. I love that there's the ideology matchbox that she kind of slid out with the little pin and that tiny tag, isn't that wonderful? And again, just like the pop of color, and then we've got the snapshots volume two. So those guys are in the new snapshots pack. Great that we have group shots and all sorts of cool things, right? Just what a great make. Uh, that's the, the fun thing. If you've never done like an assemblage project, it's just one of those that you just kind of start. You do your foundation of paper and you just kind of build. You take your time, slowly but surely you just build and you tell your story because ideology allows you to tell the story that's in your mind. That to me is, is what it's all about. And that's what it should be. And I think it, it could also have, you know, really important meanings to people. So Zoe created this one, um, Zoe Hillman, and I love it because I know that this, this has special meaning uh, to her as well. So where Zoe lives in Denmark is Tivoli. It's a wonderful park. Uh, and this inspired her because this is one of the new photomatics that I found. And if you look at his hat, He's a little guard from Tivoli. Yeah, pretty cool to find that. So uh, a great piece of history. So I love seeing that Zoe created a make uh, inspired by uh, that photo. I actually sent Zoe the original. So I, so she has, she got the original of that guy because I, I knew it needed to go with her. I love these little rays sticking out. This is one of my favorite uh, backdrops with all that big typography. Really cool. I love the rays that are coming out of there. This right here, this would be the et cetera trim so it creates these little shelves. I love that she used old letterpress. Remember this? This was from Ideology. We had these wood letterpress. Oh my gosh, they were for years and then they got retired. Love seeing them put to use. I love the color in there. See, that's the thing about Ideology. You just, if you like it, you should get it because you don't know how long it's gonna be around and you may not use it in that moment, but you'll find the perfect project for that perfect product to work with and it's nice to see it show up. So I love how she has Tivoli, a little magic can take you a long way. There's our pointy finger, the pocket watch. I love how she's got the pocket watch and those tiny little tags. And then we've got, there you go. Looks like a little jar of candy floss, little cotton candy in there. Cute, and I love the toadstools. Just a great make. So see, makes can also just give you that feel. Even if it's, you know, it doesn't have to be the entire thing. It could just be something that you want to lose yourself in or lose your imagination in, so. Absolutely fabulous. Cool detail. You want that? Okay. All right. Mario's right, got his hand out to take stuff. So, all right. Then, of course, don't think for a second that I wasn't going to be inspired to make for this because I did. And like I said, I like to just have, uh, I have, I like to make time to make time. So I decided that this past week with my, I don't know, 30 meetings booked, I was going to make this week. So I did make this week. Um, so this was inspired by a make that Paula did, I think it was probably two years ago for Halloween. Uh, she did a great make where she took the baseboard windows and she cut out and she kind of made this little uh, window opening. And I, I love the idea and I remembered it. I saved it on my desktop and I'm like, I think it reminds me of like a curio cabinet, right? Those doors. So I wanted to create my own little uh, cabinet of curiosity. So on the bottom, this is a an ideology mini clipboard that I just covered with the backdrops. I do love all that drippy paper, makes it easy to take something like a clipboard that is very new and make this drippy, grungy thing. Um, but I use that a compendium of curiosities because again, I wanted to create a little curiosity shop. So what I did for this one, you could see I, I did some little mica windows on here. I created a piece. Yes, I wanted the shelf to intentionally be like falling or breaking in. There's a ideology birdcage we did for Halloween. I had some creepy doll eyes I put in there. Uh, in the back, there's all types of different collage strips. This was a lock and key we did for Halloween. Then there is a figure stand with the hat and a little tiny tag in there. A uh, little bit of buttons, a broken, a broken doll head because I like that too. I got to turn it this way. There we go. So here you can see I use one of the entomology insects under a dome, a tiny little pencil, 
I do have little cars everywhere. I love them. And then I did the little pointy finger, the mini plaquettes. I love those. Those are also ideology, those tiny little, they, they're metal, but they look like porcelain numbers. So it was really fun to create a lot of different elements. And then I just took the backdrops and collaged a vignette box. So the foundation is the mini clipboard, vignette box, and then creating that little cabinet. So thanks, P, for the inspiration. I just was like, I need to do that. And that's the other thing. When you have stuff like, I want it to look like my brain, which is sometimes broken or wonky or crooked. So, and yeah. That shelf is so, my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> Mario, Mario's like, you. that's really cool. I'm like, that's exactly what I wanted to do. Love just have it just kind of busted off. Um, but yeah, fun stuff. And that's the other thing to, re to remind yourself. And this is what I love about ideology. I love about ideology that I can take products that we design and make and mix it with actual vintage things seamlessly. That to me is the magic of ideology where you can look in here and some stuff is vintage and some stuff was store-bought. And the fact that it all works together is where the magic of ideology lives. That's the detail. And sometimes you think like, what would I do with a birdcage? Well, I don't know. In this case, I put these cool little doll eyes in there. Um, you know, what would I do with, with stands? What would I do with little glass domes? What would I do with bugs? You never know until you want to use it. So inspiration is everywhere, guys. That, that's the whole idea uh, behind it. It's a little cabinet of curiosities. Okay. Next, we'll just talk about how we can actually lose the color and totally go into neutral. So this is a book that Susie created really focusing on the neutral aspect of ideology, because even with ideology and all those colors, we can also just uh, be lost in the beauty of neutrals. So here it starts with the ideology fabric journal. And this is, I love just seeing the, the collage paper with all of the photos. It's so cool to see it. I'm just going to open this up, how it seamlessly transfers onto fabric. So seeing all the photographic collage paper just put onto this fabric journal, it really lends itself to just creating uh, such a beautiful foundation. And that is the book that Susie uh, created. So let's open it up and take a look. All right, so I can see already just, I love the, the introduction of uh, not only layers, but you can see back here. So see this stained inky paper? This is a backdrop. That's it, it's a backdrop. There's, I mean, I would, I would be challenged to say that there's probably no additional ink on this paper because that text coming through, that's, the, that's from the backdrop, that stain from the backdrop. And I love the layers organic. I love these little threads probably, you know, shredded away from the book that Susie added. There's one of the wonderful snapshots in there. I love the new snapshots and then adding a little mica. Look at that little dried flower. That's so stunning, so beautiful. And then little inclusion. So tiny little tags, there's an ideology loop pin. There's those tiny little tags. But again, a little photomatic collage. So cute, not photomatic, photographic collage uh, from the collage paper. And it's just stunning. There's one of the lens from Ideology. I love seeing the, the paper doll portraits, little frosted crystal over there. So frosted crystal, that's a, an embossing powder that creates that wonderful frosted texture. I love how that piece of ephemera goes into the lens. Isn't this just, it's so remarkable to see how many great layers and pieces uh, are together. And I love all these bold things in the backdrops. Again, photomatic, there's even a little, I love the type chips that we had. And you can see on these frames, the cool thing about having these frames is that you could add additional stitching if you want. You can just leave it and you can use those threads to tie on a little charm if you want. So that's just taking those frames. Again, ooh, cool texture on the back, embossing glaze. But I love this too. I love that whole uh, pocket where you just create that and tear it out and have that midsection. Very cool. Look, there's another, there's a little transparency. So if you want your transparencies to be dull, uh, rub over it with a little collage medium and that will dull it down. So you can see uh, that you can still get the trans transparent look, but if you don't want the shine, collage medium matte, that will, well, matte it out, okay? Love these other little pieces. Look at the adornments, photomatic. It's so cool to see all these photos in that, in the frame, huh? Little grit paste around the edge just to give some texture. I love the buttons and you can see all of that hammering, all these fasteners. It, it's so weird how that tiny texture hammer can, can really take just a brad and make it look more industrial, like a hardware piece. And I love that. So there's a little stitch scraps, very clever Susie, taking a stitch scrap and then using the collage paper on top of that. It's just cool to see all these pieces. 
beautiful. Oh, this looks like a pocket. I see a little chain. Ah, see more little tags coming out. There's some ephemera, little eyelets, little ball chain. I love how that's collaged onto the tags. So isn't that fun having uh, just the, that imagery that you could add to it? That's very clever use for uh, the quote chip. A little hole in an eyelet. We did that for Christmas one year, but a great way to, to just add a, an inclusion with some chain. Again, another section of the book, beautiful with all of the those creams. Mm -mm. So pretty. Collage strips, all these little elements. Now, again, if you don't have collage strips, could you use ephemera snippets? Can you use curator? Yes, you can use all that. That was the inspiration of about creating that and just uh, using all of these different pieces. But now having a collage strip allows you to just go in and stick that whole piece down and then add to it. So you can always embellish what you have. So the beauty of that too is like, as you cut it apart, you're gonna have all these cool pieces that you can kind of reassemble uh, on other makes. I know, I agree. I could go through these like for days. I'm always mindful of like, talk about it, turn the page, don't talk about it, because I could stay here and just really, but that's the beauty of the makers too. They, they love to share all of these other details. And I know uh, Susie specifically does on uh, her YouTube channel, she'll do a whole walkthrough. So cool, I love this. Look at this little reveal where that paper's peeled back and stitched. It's all these surprise details that I come across. And then it just exposes the, the cover. But isn't that great how that collage paper, mm, mm, so good on fabrics. Great journal, very cool in just those neutrals. You just didn't know like neutrals could be amazing and they are, they are amazing. I do love neutrals. Paula loves neutrals, we love neutrals. So Paula created this, look at this little series. Uh, I'm gonna put this one in the middle. I don't know which, which way they go, but I'm gonna do them this way. So these are vignette boxes. So these are the squares as well. They come in a set of three different sizes, but that's the thing to remember. Like, let's say you like the big size for a lot of things. You're gonna use the other sizes eventually. Um, and so I love the fact that she took all three of uh, the same size and created these panels. So here you've got backdrops just layered and pieced, and then you have uh, that collage paper where you really are able to see all of that detail come through the photograph. One of my favorites, I do love the Ferris wheel. So you can take little bits and pieces. So remember in that collage paper, it's not just photos, there's a lot of typography. And so this, this is just gonna be paper, collage paper and collage medium and off you go. I mean, I talk about collage medium. So this is it, distressed collage medium. This is the glue that I would say 99.9% .9 of the makers uh, use and we use it for everything because it'll do paper, wood, plastic, fabric, glass, metal, metal to glass, glass to wood. Everything that we glue is done with collage medium. It comes in a jar and also comes in a squeeze with a little uh, detail applicator. But it's so nice because it has a matte finish. You can, if you brush it on with a brush, you can get great brush strokes. Or if you spread it around with your hands, you can get a smoother finish. But what a cool set of panels. Now, could they be embellished? Yes. Could they uh, be stacked yes you know you can do a, a vertical position you could even connect them so if you made a whole series of them you can start building boxes i just think that's what makes it uh, really fun when you take your elements and create beautiful art i love this set p these are very very cool uh, i already have space for these in my hallway good thinking i don't blame you because they're just they're cool it's a great a great make it really is this is another one that paula did I just thought Paula, I mean, you could really tell because Paula, I think, made eight things for live because she loves making. And I love that she does love making because her ideas are, are so cool of how she sees this product uh, being used. But this is taking the Backdrops Volume 4, the neutral pack, and cutting it into strips. So you can see using the, the length of it, but just cutting these skinny strips and then stitching it together. So much like the collage strips, but just a little bit different because there's some great uh, stitching patterns in here and I love all these neutrals with that little pop of color and then I'm just looking yep okay so this if you look back here where the cloud is the cloud that is going to be uh, layers organic so there is a, a cloud background for that which is really beautiful and then this is a snapshot that again Paula went in with a knife and cut around it wow because I was going to say like that's part of the snapshot the houses the trees all part of the same snapshot she cut around it and then there is uh, that little bit of metal. So absolutely beautiful. And I love seeing, uh, again, that little bit of texture, that little bit of the hardware just kind of hammered in there. And again, when you're looking at the art pieces, 
you know, you can look at just the different styles that you can create, whether you're doing stitching, whether you're doing the collage or whether you're doing snapshots. It's very cool to create a gallery wall of this style of make. So just keep in mind that, you know, if you're like, oh, I don't really do browns, it, it's pretty, it's pretty nice that it's a nice neutral palette that you could still add that little bit of detail, but look at that metallic. And then she's got home and then keep looking where the light shines bright of the new quote chip. Isn't that great? Texture hammer for the win. Texture hammer. See, it just looks like a really big chunky nail. Beautiful makes. So cool. Just beautiful. All right. Then this is another make that Paula did, but this one is a make she did for packaging. Uh, so this is their reliquary dome, but this is the actual real one that we had in there. So it's just beautiful. I love how, if you look in the back there, you can see it over my, my pale skin. You can see that there is a transparency in the back. So it's got that typography showing through. And then there's a little resin barrel, a little bit of string, and then the ephemera, tiny clip, little tiny vial, little tiny tag, some of the leaves. It's just, it's a nice, nice way to create a make, a beautiful display because you can see that you get so so much visibility over the front of that dome. It has, I love the botanical vibe that we have in a lot of things too with the, uh, the layers organic and the ephemera and the transparencies. A lot of leaves, a lot of flowers, birds, just stuff that I think allows you to kind of create so many cool, cool components. I agree. I agree, Vicki. It's so cool. So as we get into uh, the makes, there really, there's such a, such a level of, of beauty when it comes to botanicals. Okay. So Stacy created this. Stacy created this make. This is a vignette tray. So here we have a vignette tray that she has covered. So the tray is solid on the back. She's done some great distress painting, right? A little black, little grunge. I love the little chewed up side, but then covered the front with a backdrop. So you can see the backdrop with the handwriting in there, then collaged it with layers organic. But this, this one, I put it out last time. I'm like, what is this thing? This, I'm guessing it's like some type of hoop, maybe a stitching hoop or something, but look at that cool metal hoop. And I love how it's attached with just some string and those hammered in uh, brads, but there is a snapshot. So you can see the snapshot in the back and then the new transparency. See how it's got that little printed color, but then a little bit of that faded text. I mean, how freaking great is that for layering? Oh, those hoops. That's so cool to me. So cool. And then we've got a little bit of the ideology hardware. I love the little pencil. Look at these little details. Look at this tiny little, I do love little pencils as well. There's no, no denying. That's why I put a pencil in my little cabinet. I love it. Little tags, right? Whether they're uh, die cut tags or punched or transparency. Great with the, to use scraps. Then we have a little collect. So that's from, look at that, that little Sizzix die with that book plate. And then at the bottom, she kind of created a little vignette. So if you think about this, this tray is open, but I love how Stacy created that little divide, put that little ledge in, that's a, an et cetera trim, and then created this whole little botanical setting. So here we have a cork vial, little dome with little dried botanicals in there and a stick. There's a stick right there. Don't be fooled. Little ideology bouquet, the little paper books that you can do with ephemera. It just has such a beautiful, a beautiful look. Isn't that, isn't that amazing to see from the same release that we've seen so far as we've gone through it, the color, the, the brightness, all of that stuff. It's just so cool to see uh, how they can use the colors with, with neutrals and tie it all together to create uh, a vintage vibe. It's just cool. All right, Mario. It's beautiful. So good. All right. This next make, this is Marina's make. Well, one of them. Um, and I love, I've, I followed Marina on, on Instagram and I just love how she loves ideology, just unapologetically loves ideology and posts and posts and posts and, uh, just see stuff like on a daily basis where I'm like, you just really love ideology. And she has such a unique style of how she uses ideology. And I thought that's why uh, she'd be just a great fit to add as a maker for ideology because she contributes something that, that we don't already have. And that's important for me, um, for the brand is that, you know, that it's great that everybody makes and has styles, but when you have a very distinct approach to something, I find that incredibly fascinating. So here there is a fabric journal and Marina just has this ability to, to create layers, lots of layers, um, but not in, not in an overwhelmingly collaged way, 
more in a systematically layered way, if that makes sense. At least that's how I see it. I'm not sure of her approach, but I can like I can look at this and I can I can dissect it. I can look and say, okay, well, there's a baseboard window there. I see the transparency, and then offset is going to be a photomatic uh, photo, and then the frame. And I love how she really grunged up the metals. And then we've got ephemera and layers just kind of sticking out where it's visible, and then the quote. So not all flat collage, not all grungy, just just beautiful, I guess, clean layers, if you will. So here you can see going into the green. See what I mean? Now, like I can I can call it every piece. Like there's the photo, there's uh, the snapshot, there's the from the ephemera. I love these little. I love the ideology tiny clips and just taking components and and telling a story and having hidden pieces like a collage strip, just using it as it is. There's just using a layer of that quote chip like I talked about, just peeling it off or adding that little metal, that little charm. These are great. I see these as being very, very popular. I do because they're, well, they're just fun. But I love the, the details as well. Like when you take out an element, I think I can take, yeah, let me take out this card. There we go. Just the ability of some, some pieces are cut. There's some things you know, tucked in so you get uh, a great way to, to highlight that. So taking one photo of a beach and taking another photo of the people and layering because it's not from the same photo, but making it look like that. And then just using that as an inclusion holder, brilliant, right? Just the ability to layer pieces together. And I also love the pockets in this fabric journal, just taking certain pages, cutting them, doing some additional stitching uh, or adding other applique elements to it. Starting with the foundational piece is, is critical. Beautiful, another ideology snapshot. I love that, I love the pieces of that. And it's really important whenever we're looking for photos, we try to uh, really search for so many different photos. We want, we want to include everyone. And I love seeing uh, so many different photos in our SKUs as we continue to find them, we add them. So here you can see the colors of the ephemera, absolutely just a stunning page layout. And then uh, over here, oh look, there's a little thank you note. So sweet, Marina, look at that. Oh my gosh, a little surprise. So sweet, thank you, Marina. Um, here you could see, again, the colors. I love the, the little addition of the pin to make that little flag. And then all of these, all of these little details. I, I do love these clips. I remember these clips. I think these were like index clips we had in Ideology. See, Ideology comes and goes. Very cool. See, so the nice thing about, another thing I want to talk about, like with the backdrops, because we have so many different colors in typography, cutting them apart and using these pieces also balance a very cohesive layout, if you will. So when you're looking at those backdrops, that's why we have it in such an odd size, is that, yes, you can use it as a whole piece of paper, but cutting it apart is still gonna give you large enough pieces to work with. Uh, same thing with the snapshots, taking those, or even the collage strip, taking that piece and then leaving all the extra on it so you can wrap it around to the back. It just allows, I think, using the product how you envision it. Maybe you're gonna be cutting it apart. Maybe you're gonna use it as, as a foundational piece. It's totally up to you. I love this one. I love this one of the London bus. Very cool how all these snapshots are layered. I think that's really clever, Marina, about taking one snapshot and then cutting a different snapshot and then putting them together in the same scene like you would think it was meant to be. And I love the, the addition of the tickets in the back. So it's like these guys are uh, waiting for the bus. Isn't that cool? Really, really, I love this. It's a great photo too. Very cool. That's really, I've not seen that. I love the, the idea of creating uh, totally new photos. Oh, did it again over here too. Let's see, wow. All right, so, because I, I know what these photos were when we were, when we were doing this. So this was like the back and it's got the palm trees um, and the, the little shopping scene, but then now we have the car with the people. Isn't that cool? So two totally separate photos, but I also love how they're kind of left open to add that additional little, little inclusion. So good, a little collage frame transparency. There's just stuff everywhere. That's the thing about uh, books and journals, but the approach of being able to see everything and how that collage strip is just put in there saves you all the, the time of collaging it yourself, just adding into it, but it makes everything so balanced. Ugh. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Love it. And then again, a uh, little quote chip on the back all tied together. Beautiful make, Marina. Love it. Beautiful. All right. So in the botanical mindset, this one, this is a make from Tammy B. And 
it's beautiful. So this is a top view of this going into that botanical vibe. Tammy B constructed this entire thing of parts and pieces, uh, chipboard, etc., all sorts. And what she did, she was inspired by the transparencies, right? So those beautiful transparencies, I'm actually just going to take this off because I don't want it to fall. Um, so you can see there are four florals in transparent things too. And she made this little tea light, this candle box. And these are et cetera trims. And look at what she did with the texture hammer to create that cool dented detail. So it really looks like pitted wood. Now she cut those. Then she added the hardware, again, hammer, the ideology foundation feet, but then really housed all of these little panes to create a beautiful shadow box. Those are the metal corners from ideology, the, the curio knobs. And again, all that texture is from the hammer. So cool. It just looks like it's like wormwood. I absolutely love it. I love the detail of that. But how beautiful just to see that tea light just flickering away. It, it casts such a, a stunning glow and lights up that that transparency. But you can see when I take that off, like I love uh, how this also diffuses the light. So at night, it just has such a, a wonderful flicker to it. That's just brilliant to construct that just to start out. So the base, if you look down inside, the foundation is a vignette box, a vignette square. That'd be the panel that uh, Paula created, right? The, the wood box. But then Tammy just like, okay, I'll start that as my foundation. And then I'm just going to kind of build from there uh, and create this cool candle box. Wow. I love this lantern. See, it's the imagination. That's what I was saying at the very beginning. That's what ideology lets you do, or it should encourage you to do, I should say, which is to take those components and see like, what does that inspire you to make? To Tammy, she's like, I want to light these up. I want to just see that kind of glow. It's going to be beautiful in a tea room. I mean, you could even drill through the bottom and put in, you know, a uh, like a nightlight on a cord and just have that as a lamp if you wanted to. So really just beautiful, beautiful make Tammy. Wow. Ideas, right? Mario ideas, okay, ideas, ideas. So Paula created this, this is a, uh, a vignette divided drawer. I love the type on these backdrops. Oh, it's so cool. So that is one of that's backdrops volume four. That's one of the neutral ones. You can see there is a, a quote and this one lights up so this has tiny lights so that's going to light up that whole compartment so same concept of taking that transparency but just cutting the part that you want and putting it over over an area and then lighting it up i also love look at this there's like a little bit of mica can you see that mica tile that's like jagged right there that's a mica tile added over uh, that transparency beautiful make so here you can see i just love how paula tins <laughs> she's so good at, at just adding that detail of tinting. So there's a photomatic, there's a figure stand with the star. That star is dimensional on both sides. I love the little lucky star. That could be, that could either be from clippings or a collage strip. I'm not sure. Maybe we put it in the collage strip. Look at the little detail of those tiny little pearls. So beautiful. And then we have that light up area. And then at the bottom, just that little botanical element. In the back, there is a transparent things of that, that color palette. There's some Toadstools. I love how the makers used a lot of toadstools in this one too, because these are part of the everyday line. And I love, like Zoe used them all grungy and, and dark. I love seeing them. Just adds that great element. There's a resin barrel and there's a little leaf. So Paula, there you go. She's a leaf. I see it. And the little sticks. Beautiful, beautiful. Great make. And again, botanical. It's weird as we're going through this already. You're kind of looking at this stuff going, okay, we're, you know, an hour and a half into this and you can see how these ideas just keep evolving and changing. So next, what I want to do is really talk about how uh, a color can completely inspire a make. I'm going to try. I've got stuff kind of stacked up. And so what I've done is as I was setting up um, last night and, and putting the makes out, I noticed that certain makers just really kind of gravitated towards a color. And I thought that's very cool to see uh, because again, that's new to ideology. So you're going to see just makes inspired by a color, a specific palette. So Emma created this little folio. There's some suede in there. I love the, the papers. So you can see from the backdrops because we have those colors like this is uh, from like worn wallpaper designs. We put a lot of wallpaper designs uh, into the backdrops. So minus the texture, but we have that art. So here you can see there's a little bit. There's that slide frame from ephemera. There's a little photomatic. I love the layers. Look at that little detail of the leaves. 
That's why Paul is like, we just need little leaves. And I can see why. They add a great, a great tiny detail. Another mica tile. This right here, that's one of the, the frames. But this is uh, the folio. So you can see the accordion folio. This is part of the ideology line. This is a, a blank folio that you can go and create. And it has like an accordion book that comes out. But makers use it totally different ways. So like Emma, she d doesn't even have the accordion book in here. It's used as a structure to create all these different folds and flaps and, but the, the structure is there ready to cover. So if we look in here, we'll see the backdrops being used. I love how the backdrop, so there's the scale of the backdrop and then there is the collage strip. So same print, but a smaller scale and see how seamless they work well together. And then you have the design tape with that little splash of color, little perfection. So that's a remnant rub over that piece of ephemera because that piece of ephemera is blank. And then we just have another little fold out. There is the collage paper. I love that, that transparent look, how you can just put photos anywhere you want. Then down here, just using mini paper dolls, ephemera. Then when we get up here, photomatic. I love that. I love the, the combination of, of papers as well. There's a little flashcard back there just for the numbers the heart adornment. I love these little rolls, these little rolls of paper because see, that's another thing in the snapshot, a little graduation. So there are some certain things uh, that we included in the, the collage and the backdrops and the snapshots where you could take this and you could do spring, you could do summer, you could do Christmas. You can use these elements however you want. Here is a collage frame stitched around. Look at that. Oh. I love that. There's a transparent layer, see, with the text. And then I love how that little piece of ephemera is trapped under there and just stitched. So good. So good. She's my favorite. She is. That's why she's on the front of, I just love this photo. I don't know why. Reminds me of my grandmother. That's why. Just melts my heart. Absolutely love it. And look at that. You're never too old to dream a new dream. Mm -hmm. So true. So true. And then there is the new uh, adornment as well. Beautiful. See, such a beautiful make. And then over here, collage strip, and I like the little stitching that kind of divides it. And then these little cards or pieces that can come out. So whether you're doing, you know, any time, uh, any type you're doing layers or ephemera, just simply stacking them and clipping them together, absolutely beautiful. So it's interesting, right? Where you see those, uh, I agree, Julie, like when you see a transparent layer, like, wow, that's just so, it's so cool because the, the image is so vivid, but then you have that transparent area to work behind uh, and then those the stitching of the collage frames just it's easy to put that on there but everything works together it's so crazy to have so many different products uh, in one and then they all just work together and there you can see that quote chip again just peeled off the top and used uh, as a sticker yep just one life you know it absolutely Isn't that beautiful what a great great make so charming the details, right? And just the greens, right? Someone said, oh, just I love the color. It's like, I know, it's just the color. That's what makes it, that's what makes it amazing. So Jan created this. This is one of the curio clocks and it lights up. So I'm gonna light it up in here. You can see there's a lot of harsh light. So you're probably not, uh, I'll hold it to the light. Oh, there you go. You could see it's a little, yeah, I'll hold it sideways. So the beauty of this, so this is the ideology clock, the curio clock, it, it comes off in the back. There's no glass on the front. But as I mentioned, those circular transparencies in the transparent layers, they are sized to fit this clock. So you can put them right on the inside and they create that glass piece. So what's nice is we're very mindful of just putting the art around the bottom so you can still see whatever you put inside. So here Jan has all sorts of elements. There's a little snapshot in there. There's a, an adornments in the back and you'll see the details for the makers, but there's a resin barrel down there. There's, I see so many different things. There's a quote chip back in there, but it's absolutely beautiful. And I love how she used a little mini foundations to give it a little bit of height so she can hide that battery pack in there. And then the top is just beautiful. You can see the outside is done with the collage strips. Just cut the width of it just to kind of fit where you're putting it. And then adding a little bit, there's some Sizzix dyes in there. The florals, there's a little bit of the ideology and then some ribbon and those tiny little tags and then even some detail design tape around the edge. So I'm sure at night, just like, see, you can just, I'll turn off the light so you can see where they are. There you go. It's like the little garden is lit up at night. So beautiful. And I love that. I love again, that these pieces could be used for so many different types of makes. Oh yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. The lighting is 
strong, strong. All right, here's another green. Well, kind of green into teal blue. Susie created this one, and this is uh, also a folio. So you can see here, this was that accordion folio like that I showed that Emma did. Um, okay, I need to look at it. Susie's approach is totally different. I'm like, okay, where are the pieces? Because uh, you saw uh, with Emma's that this opens and this opens and this opens and there's an accordion book. So uh, Susie's, these are gone, but that accordion book that's normally zigzag, she has attached it in here, kind of hidden that last page in there and then stuck these together. So normally like an accordion, right? It would pull out, but these are, these are secured at the end. So now it created pockets. So see a whole clever use for that same structure just changed. So you can see the beauty of uh, the collage strips. There's two of those because with the, the photo in there, it's, it's interesting that you can just highlight a certain element. It doesn't even seem like it's part of the collage. There's, there's one of the word plaques. I do love that. And then as we open it, you just see all of these colors, the blues, the greens, there's the transparency mixed with the layers, mixed with the ephemera on the backdrops. And then uh, this tag that comes out Look at that beautiful photo booth, little die cut through that looks like the abstract elements where she just kind of used it. Same with the little rings. Those are, those are the Sizzix die cuts. So even if you sometimes look at dies and you're like, cause I know the packaging is pretty bright. You're like, Oh, Look at these little shapes and how great they are just to either punch through something, those dies, or to add those little circles. So there you can see the collage strips. And then of course we have a snapshot in the back. Isn't that great? How these books just, oh, that's what I love about books. Books have ideas. Before I even get to that, I'm gonna pull out this other one because uh, I see the same, same thing of those die cuts, just kind of creating those little holes and just adding that texture. So here's a little bit of uh, paper over the top. I do love that texture. There's that photo, ephemera, just little tags. And so all these circles, that's gonna be from the abstract elements die. Very cool. So then when you look in here, here we have that transparency. And again, if you love that mixed media, I love brush strokes in my collage medium. That's my favorite thing. That's why I did the collage brush because it creates those cool uh, brush strokes. And I think that is fabulous. Stitched on, there you can see one of the uh, frames, the layer frames collage with that stitching. So you can take advantage of those threads that are there and just add your own little trinkety bits to it. Super simple. Then we add tags. So whether you're using the, the pre-done ideology tags or you're cutting your own, see how charming that is? Photomatic, a little bit of, of ephemera, some collage medium. You can cut up your collage strips. But yeah, how's that for cool? You've never seen so many brads used ever. <laughs> The texture hammer will do that. That's what it'll do. Uh, and also just taking your pieces and kind of adding your layers. Transparency right there. Look at that. See, that's very cool. I think that's just going to be like a favorite use for that die is just kind of uh, punching that. I think that's very cool. And then adding that little element secured with a, a brad. All of these pieces. And then we've got another little card. So this one's going to be, I'm going to open it. Maybe there's nothing inside, but I just, I know that it's like a little, a little pocket that you can open. Oh, there's probably something because there's a string. Look at that. Ah, see? Little tea bags. So cool. You can see if you take, have you seen everyone like repurposing tea bags because of the, of the transparent paper? Look at that with the photos in there. That is so haunting, but so cool. That little bit of ink in there. What a cool use for those. Great to put in that little, because this is this is from chapter three. This is from collector, that little envelope that you can take out of the ideology papers. And you have those little elements on there, little remnant rubs. Again, transparency in there. You get these put away. I love that little clip over the top. Isn't that cool? Very clever. Very, very clever. Great little use. And again, just seeing that little splash of color, that little pop, and using these little pieces almost like tape. Also super clever. That's, that's a favorite photo as well. I love it. And there's a little ephemera. So we did do two of those frames because we liked it. So many details, right? But again, when you look at it, it's just inspired by a color. And I think that that definitely says a lot for uh, what we do with, with ideologies that it can just be inspired by a color. And then we can just kind of transition into different colors. This one, uh, pure shabby magic that Stacy created. So this again, another vignette box. You'll see a lot of these foundations are just vignettes. Because it's wood, it's lightweight, but it's durable. 
If you work with paper mache or cardboard too much and you do a lot of collaging or weight, it just bows and bends and that's why we do uh, vignettes. But you can see uh, besides that that is just my favorite photo ever. Look at just how charming and magical. I don't know, is this like, this looks like, I don't know what it is. It kind of looks like a little scrubby, like one of those copper scrubbies, but I'm sure it's something else, but it's like this wiry, beautiful stuff, but it, it reminds me of a copper scrubby. I think it's great. There's a little little heart charm there, some florals. There's a little tiny vial, it says wish from the tag. But I love the detail that Stacy does because it, there are just the collage strips there stitched, but there's so many layers of, of fabric, right? Whether that's, I mean, there's lace, there's a little bit of mummy cloth, there's all sorts of just fibery things coming around. And each side is different. So here we've got lace and a vintage button. I just think it, it really softens the panel approach, right? It just softens that. I think that's so, so crazy. And I love, again, how this is highlighted, taking that piece of ephemera, that wonderful slide frame, and putting it over a photo in the collage strip and then adding a little bit of mica, and then it just looks like a slide photo, but it's really part of that strip. You're just highlighting the photo. Stacy, that's just absolutely brilliant. So beautiful, and just, it's, it is, it's all these soft little shabby details. This little bit, like even back here, there's a little bit of embossed glaze, just some little dots, just, just little texture, and I like how the, the glitter just tumbles around in there and how the fabric is just wrinkly and gathered, and that's just magic, it really is. But then, of course, the background, that's one of the, the backdrops. See, grungy, which is those little hints of floral. Stunning. Yeah, so cool. So if you like to sew and you like to layer and you like to stitch up your papers and sandwich it in between, you know, a little warm and natural, a little uh, mummy cloth, it just adds a perfect touch. That is a family heirloom for sure. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. Then we kind of switch colors, really. Um, it was just about like seeing things and having maybe a different approach to color. So this one, Marlise is channeling her inner pink for sure. This is pink. There is pink stamping, pink ribbon, and, and kind of incorporating the element. So this is a, a divided drawer. So this is similar to that make that Paula did vertically. Uh, but Marlise went in, added some foundation feed, and kind of created this, this little nook. So these, these little boxes open. It's almost like a sewing box, and there's a lot of uh, different elements so she created some little spools that she put in here. But you can see all the paper elements uh, inspired by the pink ephemera, pink backdrops, or even going in with your uh, Sizzix dies at those wonderful vintage labels that you can ink. Little remnant rub. So many details. So adding these little pieces, and you can still incorporate other colors, but here you can see transparencies. There's all those little oops, components and details. Oh, these threads stuck together. But all these little details make little pockets. So this is like a little matchbook. See how it opens? And then it creates a little tiny book inside just using your papers. That's really clever. Just using a collage strip for that. So taking the entire strip of that and just folding it to make a matchbook. That's very clever, Marley. Love that. It's a great way to, to incorporate these little pieces. Here you can see even the backdrop, that little, the little bit of sparkle. That is the craft stock sparkle that she incorporated. All of these layers little charms, all the little details. So yes, if you have die cuts and stamps, you can use those, add that, add that color. I think that, that is the important thing. That's why we have all the things, right? We have all the things, like Vicky Booten would say, all the things to, to ink and stamp and color. This is when you, when you get them all out and you put them together and you make magic, you make what you make to incorporate all of these little pieces to match your idea. That's what I was saying about ideology. Ideology should just inspire you to, to embrace that idea and create whatever inspires you to, to do it. It doesn't need to have a purpose or a function. I sometimes see that question on social media, you know, and of course I'm sitting rolling my eyes as I'm reading it going, really? Like, why do you make a tag? Why not? Like, because you want, why do you eat? Because you're hungry. Why do you make something? Because you wanna, you wanna create. It doesn't matter what you do with it. Maybe you give it away, maybe you don't, but you do it because you like it. And I think that, that that's what art should always do. It should make you like it. You shouldn't have to ever explain your, your art or imagination to anyone. You should just be able to embrace it and enjoy it. These little matchboxes, these are these little matchbooks. They're, they're, so, they're so clever, really, just taking that strip. Isn't that brilliant? Great little layer, and it's just got one of the large fasteners holding it all together, hammered on the top. 
See, just even these, very cool. And you could stamp or do all sorts of things in there. Love the idea, <laughs> so fun, so, so fun. And then we've got another, what appears to be a book in here. Okay, what's going on here? Um, let's see, I guess I'm gonna pull a thread. Either this book is gonna stay together or it's <laughs> gonna all fall apart. But I, it looks to be tied together with this thread. I don't know, I'm not really good with threads on camera. You can tell. Okay. Whoop. Nope. Yep. Oh. Oh. Well. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Got it. All right. So now we've got uh, a mini book. Again, splashes of pink. And you can see all of these great little elements, all of these little pieces clipped together. Charming. Love all these details. So the ephemera that we have new should certainly mix and match with uh, all of the other ones, the curators, snippets, any of the stuff in the past. So, you know, utilize these colors. We always like to stick in that vintage palette. And I think it is important to remember to, to utilize things based on scale and what's going to fit. And also use your stamps, use your die cuts, create whatever you wanted to create uh, as you're building something. It doesn't always have to be uh, same, same. I love all these little papers in here, right? These little light papers that are all inked and stamped. Very cool. Again, see, isn't that cool? That's from a backdrop. That's the one from the horse. I think it's so good. Um, <laughs> I know, you can, you can tell, like I just, I sweat because I just, I hate, I don't want to destroy some somebody's work because I, I don't know how it opens. Yeah, um, then you can see again, all these pieces. I love the stack and then just stuck together with tiny attacher and then clip these ideology mini clips. I love that kind of clipped collage. These little pockets that you can see the stamp tags. Stampers Anonymous, there's the transparent layers. See, they do add a lot of interest, I agree. They're very cool. All these little pieces, it's, these little clip files are so cool because they're just all sorts of little uh, random bits just kind of stuck together. See, little transparency, little piece, and yeah, it just adds that interest just by kind of clipping it on there. Love these frames too. It's like we did too, but I'm sure Paul and I are both saying, gosh, we should have done like a whole pack of them. Isn't that great? Like all the little details that can just go page after page of just uh, creating these little books. And I do love that. I love seeing how people can take paper and construct it in totally different ways, different sizes, uh, different scales, different, different ideas, and then putting that all together. And I'll just, I'll leave the thread there. Cool make, or at least very cool. Clever ideas in there. All right, let me set that down. Then, Keeping with, keeping with pinks, Marina created this, again, a journal. So this one is a, a little different. So this is going to be using the folio. I love this big, big fluffy ribbon. That's easy for me to pull open. So this one you can see, again, has a lot of just visible, beautiful layers. We've got the, the string, there's gonna be the layers, the transparencies, just stacked up there. And then there's the new ideology metals. It's so great how just makers have a different approach uh, to building, right? Whether you're, uh, like I said, collage, tear. So like, you know, Marlies is, you know, tearing and layering and stitching and Marina is uh, like, I just call it like systematic where it just kind of has more of a puzzle piecing. And I think, you know, Paula and I talk about that a lot too. Everybody has a different style. I'm, I'm very much like a linear maker, right? Where everything has that. And some people can just embrace their wonkiness and I love all styles. It's so cool. So here, little envelope, little one from, Chapter three, I love the, the transparencies in there. Little file tabs. Here we can see the photomatic and the papers. So this is just totally deconstructed and I love the idea of, of how things are reimagined and put back together. Like I can watch bookmaking videos all day long and how people construct things and stitch and like, oh, we're gonna do this binding and put it together. It's, it's very, very cool. There's so many different artists that can construct the most amazing things. I love the little ribbon uh, on that special circle. They're great, but you see how like pretty in pink, you know, those little splashes of green, but there's all these uh, little inclusions kind of tucked behind those photomatics. Absolutely beautiful. Photos, little side frame again, that's from chapter three. It looks like there's something in here, but oh no, this opens. <laughs> see, oh, very cool. That little tag, does it come out? I'll tell you in a second. Yep, it does. So just taking that little bit of ephemera, collaging that. 
Yeah, I find that really interesting as well. Like I, I kind of want to, I mean, I'm inspired from a different collage approach and I've seen this a lot in mini books, but you know, I think it's very cool. Like even if you weren't doing a book, if you were just doing a collage, let's say it was on a panel to actually collage some elements, but leave some elements kind of not glued, but that be, that is part of your collage, but knowing that it can be removed from your collage, I got to try that. That not from a book approach, but I kind of think it's interesting because every time I do collage, I'm like, I want to glue it all down secure. I've never really thought of like leaving a seam, if you will, uh, open to, to tuck something in. But cool. Isn't that just a, a great way? There's Marina's little name on there for Mario. Uh, isn't that just great just to have all those, those beautiful layers? So many talented ideas for the makers. Beautiful, beautiful books. I love that. that ribbon is. It's like fabric, just torn fabric. Stunning. Um, yeah, I love how every maker just has their own approach to things and they're like, I'm going to do me. So this next one, we're going in from pink to blue. Uh, this is Tammy B's. Uh, if you follow Tammy B on social, you know that this make has a very uh, special meaning and a special story. And it's, it's just absolutely charming. Um, Tammy loves her tea, that's for sure. And she took the curio clock, but in true Tammy style, added the silverware adornments. Look what she did with the knives. I got to show you that. Have the collage strip. So it's really cool that her and Jan like had that whole idea, but but these kind of have a little little whitewash over it, so it creates a, a subtle effect on the front. A totally different transparency. It's really cool how uh, her and Jan did clocks. They both did transparencies, and they both used a different one of the circles. I don't think that was planned. I think that just happened, um, and I love that. But take a look at what she did for the top, where she took the little spoons and bent the two spoons to create the little handle, and then she's got all of these little, these little charms. Love, happy, the heart. Um, it's just, it's so adorable. And then inside it lights up. Let me turn on the tiny lights in there. Look at that. So this one, you know, if you ever want to light your clock up from the back, remember to put the tiny lights uh, really along the inside of the front. It's kind of interesting because you would think, oh, I need to put tiny lights in the back. No, if you put them in the front, like hidden behind that ring, because remember the back of this comes off. There is nothing on the front there. You can see the little tiny lights. Then when you turn it on, it lights up everything inside your clock. So it's almost like thinking backwards because I've done a few where it's like, I think, oh, I'm going to put the lights in the back and light it up from the back, but then you don't see anything because it's backlit. Get that? Backlit, lit from the back. <laughs> Front lighting will show it all up, but take a look at this little little tea party and the little tea for two, that little number two, there's a little jar. I love how she turned that cork vial into like a jar of preserves. Little shelf in there. There's a teacup from uh, the ephemera, the little ideology bouquet, but isn't that... It's so charming just to see ephemera and transparencies and bottles and backdrops and, you know, the adornment silverware, all of those things just turn into something so pretty and amazing. It's super, super clever, but this make has a very special meaning. So you'll have to check out Tammy's social media to, to learn about the, the meaning behind this make. It's, it's absolutely charming. It's so sweet. Yeah. Yeah. It's so sweet. You got to check it out. So from pink, we go into, into the blues. So Paula created this vignette, beautiful blues in that. And I do, I love that. I love seeing just, it's so cool how many makers just kind of channeled a color. So this is going to be a, a divided box. And I love how the whole outside collage strips and then the whole back, look at that beautiful collaging of that using backdrops and collage strips, just so good. So, so good. I'm really bad about finishing the back of things, but I love how Paula created this. So if we take a look inside, you can see the snapshot. And I love how that's just, I love the tinting. It just makes them look three dimensional, but really that's, that's all on this photo. And then this one is cut. See that little car. And then there's a piece of ephemera in the back. Absolutely beautiful. Paula, man, your knife skills. That's, that's impressive. Just to cut around those photos. Wow. Yeah, Marina did the same thing. I'm not really good with a craft knife, so I need to practice on that. I love how she made, this has like a little bit of velvet on it, a little soft velvet, how she took that uh, photo frame and then just stitched on those little flowers on that little bit of velvet. This looks like a bottle of champagne or wine. So beautiful, uh, the cork vial. There's another one of those little leaves. Love seeing the ephemera layer. There is the, the mini dome with the buttons. There's our mini flare. We had a conversation about that. Paula's like, I thought these went away. I'm like, nope, they're still around. I do love those mini flare. Look at this top hat. If you saw the sneak peek, how adorable is that figure stand with the top hat and that little tiny 
flowery gem on it. So cute. And I love how the stand is painted gold, stacked on top of that spool with a little needle and thread. It's the vintage details, right? Every, I mean, each one of these could be its own make, just looking in the details. You can get lost in the details. So here's an ideology matchbox, just kind of partially open. There's one of the new adornments. These frames just have so much detail when you add any type of colorant, paint or ink. Absolutely charming. I love that little, little bit of string. Look at those tiny little pins. My gosh, so cute. There's a little tag, a little cork, and then a button card in the back. There you go, lucky day. It's your own little brand. Love that. And then a little pocket watch. A little sweetheart. This is vintage. I said to Paul, I'm like, we need to do those. I love that. That's, that's a vintage uh, pin that says sweetheart. So that might be coming to ideology <laughs> next year. I love it. Uh, but there's a little pocket watch. So inside uh, is one of the photos, a little snapshot. And again, the bottles. And so the bottles, I love how Paula made the bottles really dark, you know, doing some inking, a little paint on there. I think it's, it's so cool that you can just darken it up. And that is a vintage piece. That's stunning, isn't it? got like little sparkles on it. So if you love vintage, always be on the lookout for, you know, broken jewelry, anything like that, just to kind of uh, incorporate into your makes. There's a little baseboard window in the back. And I love how uh, using the backdrops just to make them look like each room has been wallpapered with something completely different. But yeah, what a stunning make, but it all just reads like beautiful blues. So fun to see an ideology, right? Where you've been seeing like, whoa, very cool um, to kind of focus on, on a color. I think focusing on a color is, is what it's all about. It is. It's what it's all about. So this one, this is, this is something that I did. So this is a make that I, I did actually um, the year I was going in for heart surgery. I made something for the show that I wanted just to remind uh, myself, just kind of, because sometimes to me, art has a, a very powerful impact just on how we think. And so I made this using a, a paper doll and the transparent wings. And it just says, uh, you just hold on. And that was just a message to myself just to kind of get through what I was going through. And I'm on the other side of it and I'm grateful for that. And I've had this in my studio. He, he sits perched on this car and he's been sitting in my studio, well, since I made him. But with this dome, I'm like, oh my gosh, he would be so great if he could go into a dome. But truth is when I went to put the dome on it, he was too tall. And I was like, oh man, Mario, like, and I don't, didn't want to alter it, didn't want anything. So. I had to kind of imagine it, just kind of reimagine like what would I do with it? So here's just an idea to share on the reliquary dome. If you have something in it and it's not going to fit because of that cork base, you can use the glass over anything, right? We talked about that with the display dome. It can go on like jelly jar lids or anything. You don't necessarily need to put the cork inside. So I had this old tin that was also blue. And all I did was went in and dented the inside of the tin to make it shorter then the glass could sit on the outside of the tin and it made it the perfect height. And so I just glued this on. This is just glued on with collage medium. Cause like I said, you can glue metal to glass and glass to metal and metal to metal. But again, with the reliquary dome, you just get that wonderful clear line of sight. So now this can sit in my studio. He'll be protected uh, forever. And I can just, just always look and be inspired to just hold on, but very cool. Uh, way of using the reliquary dome. So I wanted to to share that. So if you have something special, just those domes, even if it's not a makey make, look around your house, you're like, I look, I need a dome, you know, for that little figurine or whatever. That's what makes these domes so cool. So you could probably, you'll be seeing a lot of domes uh, around my house for the seasons because there's so many little trinkety things that I want to protect. And these domes are going to be perfect for that. So I love them. So I just wanted to kind of, just wanted to share that idea. Yeah. So this next one, also in the blues, uh, Jan created this. I love it. So this is the vignette panels that you've been seeing us work on uh, normally on the back, but see, it can also be used uh, on the inside. And I love those tiny lights in this one too. There we go. Look, they lit up, light up right in there. So Jan created this using the inside of that display panel, then a small square vignette box. Then we've got ephemera in the back and then we have that great like storybook transparency. See what I talked about? the transparent layers where it's printed and it has a little bit of text. Oh, so good. So you can see just how those are layered and then inside all these little leaves. So there's, there's metal charms, there's die cuts, all sorts. And then it's got make this journey your own. So see how I was saying that like these can just go down the side and they're totally legible because of that font. So they don't always have to be used going across. That's what makes these really cool. But I love how Jan 
uh, layered with all these colors. Again, some Sizzix dyes. You can see back in there the collage strips. There's some great crackle paste goodness all the way around the outside of this uh, tray or this uh, panel. And I love seeing these frames too. These frames have been really interesting how the makers have approached it. Some are using it actually as a frame. Some like Jan just put it in as its own layer. But because it's a layer, you can put stuff in it and on it and around it. And I think that's very cool because you already have that stitching design. There are the birds layered on there. I just love how everything is like, her collage is like woven together. Do you see that? Where like, there's a little pointy finger. Look at that, just a little figure stand. I didn't even see that till a light just hit it. That is so cool. Adorns a sky of blue. Very just fabulous, I do. I love the frames, but yeah, it just kind of takes you on this whole little journey. There's Paris wrapped up with a little tag. Isn't that just fascinating? It's the fascinating world of ideology, how you can just get lost into a story or imagination just from every little, every little element. Everywhere you look is something so interesting and, and detailed and unique, especially like there, again, there's a little mummy cloth. We do that at Halloween. And I talk about that every Halloween because people forget. They're like, what is all that gauzy stuff people use? Oh, look at these little, I just noticed it because the light just hit it. Let me see if I can get it to work over here. If you look back here, all of this is, is the craft stock sparkle. It looks like rhinestones, like these little, all those leaves. I thought that was metal. I thought those were metal charms. That's not. That's funky floral. That's a Sizzix dye. Holy moly. <laughs> I thought that was all metal. It sparkles so beautifully. It does. It looks like Oh man, it's like marcasite. Look at that. There's also these leaves. See that little bit of sparkle? It did. It looked like all these vintage metal things. And that was I, the new craft stock sparkle. That's beautiful. Stunning. Absolutely gorgeous. I love it in those, in those shades of blue, Jan. See again, just everybody has their own, their own style, own style for, for simplicity. So even if your color just happens to be grunge, Vicky's got you covered. And that's, that's important because, you know, grunge, grunge is, is super important, but I was very impressed to see Vicky creating something with all these cards, right? It wasn't like a vignette or something. So I can't wait to, cause I'm sure it's not just cards if it's Vicky. So here is just every shade of grunge you could imagine. And I'm here for it. So here we have the same box, but hers looks like a tin drawer instead because she's covered it with uh, metallic, hammered it. Look at the hammering. Look at the rust of oh, Vicky. Just, she loves a good rust and she does it so authentically well. Little grit, little drippy rust, little nails in there. I mean, it just looks like it's this salvaged metal drawer. You wouldn't know it was, it was vignette. Oh my God, that's so good. I just want this like as a wall in my house. Oh man, Vicky, that's so good. And then we've got these cards. So there's, you know, little, there's all sorts of little dangly stuff, like stuff hanging from chains. So I'm gonna, just gonna take out a section and see what I get. So take a look at these. I love these cards. So these are done like at a chipboard. So we got like thicker art cards. Um, and, oh, you see, used a 3D folder. I was like, is this a vignette panel? No, nope, chipboard, but with, but with wood. Um, but I love the gauge dials. There's a the label tape. There's the collage strips. There's the paper. So see how the paper is just transformed onto wood, but the wood isn't wood. The wood is actually a 3D folder that looks like wood. That's brilliant. Little hardware head. I mean, these are just so, they're so chunky good. With the gears, there's that, that pop of yellow back there. Yellow has never looked so good to me. Look at the grungy yellow. There's the, the stencil cards from Ideology. They're designed to be used. Some people stencil with them, but really they're designed to be used as an embellishment but I love that it's got that lens in there. I don't know if this is supposed to come out. Is it? It, it looks like it, sh it should, but it's, oh my gosh. It, I don't want to pull this out, Vicky, if I'm not supposed to, so. <laughs> because it's, I mean, I will, but it's, it's stuck, but it's got some grunge. Maybe it's just supposed to grab onto a little stopper, but it's got some grunge on that lens. And then we've got a little pocket here. Let's see what's inside, if there's anything inside. Oh yeah, oh, look at him. So good, grungy, little remnant rub, very cool. So this, these little envelopes, again, this is chapter three where we've got those little coin envelopes. Wow, so cool. Let's take this next section. I love the, you know, the grunge with the hit of yellow, really, you know, because I have such a, a great relationship with yellow, I do. Uh, here we can see, again, 
more of those gauge dials. This, this has some glaze on it. I love how that's all been hammered down. So that's just so good. I think that's gonna kind of be my next favorite thing to try is just taking uh, the 3D folder and using that collage paper on there because that really has great texture. So you can put it on smooth and then emboss it. That to me is, that's what it's all about right there. Yep, and again, repetition. I love the gears, I love the, the large numbers. Yep, that's from Layers Urban. That set was retired. We're all sad about that, I know. And this is just, this is craft stock um, black where you can sand it. So it's a printed black paper, but it's a craft core. And then that's how she was able to ink yellow with black. If you think about that, you know, that'd be pretty challenging. But the fact that that cardstock is craft, printed in black, then when you sand off the black, you can ink in yellow. That's really clever, Vicky. I love that. Take out another frame because now I, now I know what's in here. I can't, oh, he's a good one too. I have so many favorites. They're so industrial. I love, love that. I love the addition of, of the rubs on there as well. Cool with these plaques. Oh, see, yeah, it was supposed to come out because this one's out. I would, I could pull it on. But see like how these lenses are just kind of grunged up, inked. These were the ideology lenses. These have been retired as well. They're very cool though. But I love how she just tore apart those, those stencil cards just to create a pocket because you can still see through it and you can put this, put that lens right inside and then you have all these little dangly bits, whether they're, it's like old school type charm right there. I love that. These little clasps. Hmm. I just keep going and going. We got one more stack, but see, again, repetition of ideas. You can take that and be like, okay, I'm going to use the gauge dials and frames. I'm going to use collage strips. And each one is still its own work of art because of how you, how you perceive that imagery. But that's such a brilliant idea for that 3D. I'm, I'm all over that. I really am. It's so good. Um, and I love just, again, these numbers, but these are even stitched on. These do not come stitched. So that is some serious maneuvering with the machine. Look at that. I just noticed that. I'm sure all the numbers are probably stitched. Yep. Wow. That is some maneuvering. Everyone's trying to just up their sewing game, Mario. No kidding. My good. gosh. I could barely do a straight line, really. Here's another one. There's that gear. See, now I can take the other one. I got to see. It's like, see, I can't wait to see what photo is in here. <laughs> can you tell? Like, but I want to open the, see, five-year-old. That's me. Like, I just want to see what's inside. I just want to open the prize. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's a good one too. See, it is. It's like a prize. Like, ooh, what do I get? Oh, I got that one. It's like vinyl mations, right? Like, I just want to see what I get. Very cool. But see, I love that grit paste around these frames. Make it so grungy, so good. Yeah, very cool grungy approach in true Vicky style. See, that's the thing. Makers can do whatever they do. They just stay true to who they are. And I think that's that's what I celebrate the most about them is that they can take the same assortment of product and just do them. Even if you think like, well, how am I ever going to use that yellow paper or whatever? And there you have it. That just, show, that just shows exactly uh, how you can do it. So this one, this was an ambitious project that Tammy created. I, I didn't understand it, but now I understand it. So she said she's always wanted to create this. It's a, it's a book nook for those that, for those that follow, you've seen Tammy B transform vignettes into books. She's got great tutorials. It actually starts with the vignette wood boxes, but she creates this whole, uh, this kind of whole book area on the outside. So it looks like a thick book, all right? So it could go onto a shelf as a book, but the book nook, if you've seen those, it's like a scene inside a book. So you can put it in your shelf and you can put books uh, on the side of it. So this one lights up. So we're gonna light it up in there, but I'll, so it's got a little skylight up there. Take a look at that. But I'm gonna just let the light try to show off the details. So take a look at this whole little scene that Tammy created with all of this, all of this ideology goodness. So there's like the little deco frames up there. There's a little hat. I love how she's got the flowers tied, a little bookshelf she created in there. I mean, it's all such tiny miniature things, right? Then there's that little terrace on the top using the metal gates and all of the little ideology ornate and all the florals too. So many botanicals in there. And there's a little mantle with the light. It's very hard to show, but I'll hold it upside down. But there's a little, see how she made the little fireplace lantern? There's even brick, little embossed brick in there. I'm sure she's gonna have great detail photos uh, on her blog. There you go. That shows it better. See that brick in there inside the fireplace? Come on. And she constructed all this. I'm sure out of like pieces of chipboard and, and scrap things and just made uh, cool little furniture and little books. So that's the other nice thing. And she said, um, see Jan, Tammy said the same thing. She's like, 
I've always wanted to make one of these and I just had to make it. And I was like, okay, great. Cause it, and then even putting it with that, live a story worth telling, like how, so that's the other thing. And ideology should inspire you to do that. It should do the thing you want to do. Um, that's what it is. And she's like, you know, I know it's, it's just different, but I wanted to make it. And I think that, you know, when you look at these, the backdrops, it's not beautiful. So these are the ideology papers. It really lent themselves to just creating something uh, so, so stunning and so beautiful. But yeah, this is all, this is all trickery. And Tammy shows you how to do it. It's very cool. She does it all with, with paper and pieces of chipboard, but absolutely fabulous make. Cool book nook, right? Oh my gosh. I can't even, I can't even imagine working in something so small. Like it's, it's almost like I would have to build it and then just like fold it up and then glue it together. I'd have, maybe that's how you do it. I've said like, I'd have to build it flat and then fold it up and then do up the seams. I don't know. I'll have to watch a tutorial. I'm sure she's going to share. So great make Tammy. And then these cards, I'm, I'm so impressed. Again, I, I talk about uh, Sharon and how she just takes her card making approach to this. And Sharon, I love these because when I saw them, I was so happy you sent them all for live. But what's great about this is seeing how ideology can be used in the eyes of not only a card maker, but somebody that really loves color. And I think this line uh, really spoke to uh, how things can be put together. So, and I'll lay them all out because she did three versions of each of the cards. And that's what I really love is to see uh, the repetition of that, where you can take a snapshot, you can take uh, the, the word plaque, you've got the ephemera, you can do backdrops. So all of these you're creating, well, they're cards. I mean, so you can create cards and just switching the colors. You can take your paints, your crayons, and really build the most incredible cards and these cards wouldn't even have to be cards like that could go into a frame right because it's like a framed piece of art but whether it's transparencies with the tiny attacher i just love all of these layers and then all done on on paper just from the backdrops and then attached to a card base so very cool then we've got this next series of cards and then these all use the frame so see so now she just took the the frame there's photomatic there's the transparent layer back there that's stitched a little bit of ephemera, the metal leaves, and then uh, small talk, chit chat, however you want to add your quote. But she did the exact same thing where she took that, a piece from that, metal leaf. I mean, you can see the repetition in ideas to create those cards, all with the transparency, the leaf, the frame, the photo, the quote. Isn't that so cool? I love that. So when you think, oh, I'm a card maker and I don't know what to do with ideology, this will allow you to kind of still play with those layers and do on a, on a foundation that's very comfortable to uh, what you're used to. And then probably build the confidence to try it on a panel because there's nothing, there's nothing different from doing it on a, a vignette panel or a canvas than a card. It's really just a foundation piece. And then we have these three cards. And this, of course, just going to be your backdrops. These are going to be the layer collage frames the photomatic, the quote, absolutely fabulous. Just taking those frames and all of those little pieces. So you're like, okay, I'm gonna start with backdrop, then I'm gonna add a layer, then I'm gonna add ephemera, then I'm gonna add a photo, then I'm gonna add frame, then I'm gonna add a quote. And you do the same thing every time and you can still create absolute magic. So when you take a look at, at the ideas, right? Where you just go, okay, these, those three cards, these three cards, these three cards, they're all that wonderful repetition, but creating with the most unique things to make cards with ideology. I freaking love it. It is, it's brilliant. Each one is an idea. Oh, and I just noticed that. Look at the craft stock sparkle. See, it's so, this makes me happy because I'll, I'll have to say like Deco Sheet came out seasonal because eh, I could take it or leave it. It was a little, it was just a little too sparkly, I guess for me. But this, it's so subtle, like you've noticed that half the time I don't even notice it when I'm looking at it at first. It's just when the light hits it, it just has this like vintage shimmer, I guess. So different than Deco Sheet, but so similar. I absolutely love it. Great cards, right? All right. We've got one more basket to go through and then we'll wrap up. But so much inspiration. Woo. Incredible. Okay. So we've got some cool, I just have a few more, just three more makes, three more kind of neutral grungy makes but these are a little bit bigger so the bigger ones that like are more challenging to handle like let's set them off to the side all right so this make zoe created uh, 
and I'll, I'll hold it in, in different angles. So this is kind of the, the overview. This is the vignette tray, and I love how Zoe worked inside the tray. Uh, most of the time we see stuff on the outside, but this is inside the tray. There's a little book. We'll open that in a second. I think I can open it. And just holding this up. So here we've got the tray, and the tray has a little hardware. So if you look around, there's the ideology hardware. So it just has the you know proper handles as the tray. But if you look, it's this whole cool experiment. So we've got the reliquary dome with a transparency in the back. You see that little text coming through and look at all those toadstools. So the butterfly is back here and you've got all these great toadstools and moss and then you have those little, those little tiny tags. Zoe, this is freaking awesome. Then you've got this, this small display dome because the glass domes, it comes in all types of sizes. But I love that with all the insects pinned in, little entomology, another little toadstool. Then we've got, oh see, there's a little vial with a wishbone in there. You see that where my finger is? So cool to have the wishbone. Again, another bug. And then we have laboratory. I love just these bottles just wrapped in, in string. There's little bubbles in there. They're kind of green in color, alcohol inked. I just love all of these. It makes me nervous with the glass. I'm like holding on to it thinking it's gonna fall out. But um, I love how all of these bottles have little snippets, little curators, some have wires, some, I love the little nail in the top of that. Isn't that a great detail? Yep, this, these little circle labels are all from curator. And then we've got those stacked gears and a clock key. Ooh, so good. So, so good. And then this little compartment was just built with a setter trim. It's the same trim that Stacy used on hers. It's the same trim that Tammy used. It's from Stampers Anonymous. It's a, it's a paper board, so it almost, it almost thinks it's wood, but you can still cut it uh, you know, with a, a knife, sometimes even scissors if it's small enough pieces. But yeah, isn't that just, it's phenomenal. And then when this is in the back, it's probably like the little chemist's like, notes or something so it's not cool great perspective i'm not sure if i'm supposed to open this but um so speak now or out. i'm gonna open it <laughs> um so here we've got this cool little book and again it's so interesting like normally zoe's not a bookmaker normally vicky is not you know into card makers and right. they both did so i love that this this release inspired them to kind of create those other those other types of makes it's cool so this this is an old school piece of hardware. I love these. These are the ideology buckles. They were gone. Little little eyelet in there. She created the strap. I yeah, love the spoon. The Yay. You can tell I was stalling. <laughs> okay. Well, because I just, I, you know, I don't want to open it and be like, well, I, I didn't know you were going to open it on camera. I would have finished it. Okay. Let's open this up. See, look at, let's just, let's just observe this craftsmanship, right? Taking a little bit of twill tape, stitching on those little snippets, and then adding this hardware. I did love these hardware, those little buckles and an eyelet, so you make your own little belt. Yeah, you could find these stock up because they're, they're gone. Then we've got, oh, see, it's not a book. They're these great little cards. Okay, all right, I get it. They're these little folios. Here we are. Welcome to reality. Love this. Love seeing that the silverware. There's our, our wonderful little snapshot. Then we can just, wow, this is, this is impressive. Look at all this stuff. Wow. 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 Very cool. Love all the layers. And again, taking backdrops, taking the transparent layers, taking the ephemera, and then using, well, that's my favorite, the uh, curator snippets that we had in. But he's a favorite as well. All those little snippets, those photomatic. See, it, it is nice to have that bigger photo. I'm not going to lie. But look at all that goodness. Little remnant rubs back there. Little layering. That's very cool to just create that that pocket and the other cards are perishable. So it does, it like things like this, the paper side of it also allows to create a storyline behind a make like this. So, you know, this could be you know, the, the scientist notes or it could be anything, but it, it does allow to have all these ideology elements to help tell a story. And I think it that's what it should do. Look at that with the rubs. I love these little books. Aren't those transparencies great? Those transparent layers are just magic because you don't expect the piece to just be that big, but it is. And the fact that everything else behind it is transparent, you can do all of your other layers. It's just so cool. So cool. Remnant rubs in there. And then we have another card that can come out. Look at that. So these must be the scientists. That's what I, it's kind of what I think. These are their little ID cards because it's got all their little information. Well, there you go. Holtz identification card. So good. Yeah. Zoe was, Zoe was working the remnant rubs. I'm here for that. I love it. See, remnant rubs are one of those things that, you know, 
they're in the line, but they don't sell a lot. So we can't do new ones all the time. So I love seeing when they get used because maybe that means we could eventually add more, but very cool. I love those big numbers too. Look how that's sanded away. So cool. So file cards with that little, that little buckle to go around it, which I'll do later and then put in its little divide. Cool make, Zoe. Just, wow. Wow, wow, wow. All right. Then we've got a make from uh, Paula. I love this tray. It's just beautiful. And this was one that uh, she made this. She's already just making and making. She's like, I had another idea. Um, and I'm glad she followed through with it because it's just brilliant. So here's taking a vignette tray. So it's going to be the larger the tray because the trays come in two sizes uh, in the same set. So there's the large tray. You can see the size of it. Uh, totally collaged all around. So I love the backdrops, but I also love these little patches that I noticed she did with the little marble tape from Ideology. Just love that red. That's all, again, part of the backdrops. These papers are just phenomenal. Best papers that we've done. And I didn't think I would ever say that since Memoranda, but I've got to say these backdrops, they just crush it. Then we've got this great tape, right? Claims for errors must be made in receipt of goods. Cool little tape all the way around. But let's focus on the inside. So inside there's another vignette. That's a vignette square box. These are the Ideology matchboxes that Paula took out and just use the drawer of the matchbox. You can make any kind of box out of little papers, but she made this whole little file. So if you look in here, oh, that's so cool. So look at this photo. So she's got the, the photo on like on a transparency and see how it's bent. So the photo just kind of bows out. So it really creates that whole uh, illusion, that whole little shoreline. And she's got the, the birds flying in the background. That's really clever to put a photo in there and give it a little bend. Man, you guys have been doing some cool stuff with photos. Little nest made out of wire with some pearls. Another leaf, Paula, you used all your leaves. Well done. She used them, she's like, just, I'll use them. I, I love that, little cozy nest. These little paper books folded, little story. Button card, I do love these little button cards. There's a nail, I think we saw that a sneak peek. Paula really loved the tiny texture hammer because you can hammer a nail that close to an edge because it's a tiny little hammer. That's what's cool, a little key mini flare, and then this beautiful quote that she printed out and kind of created this, this whole ribbon uh, of a beautiful quote. And then at the top, uh, a favorite, definitely a favorite photomatic photo. Isn't that stunning? And I love how the buttons, these little sewn buttons are on this bingo card. Isn't that fabulous? Great little piece of ephemera. That's a, another layer piece. These, these little date dials, these little clock date dials. I do love those. I saw Vicky use one as well. These have been retired. These were metal that are printed. They're so cool. There's a thimble also retired. There's so much stuff. That's the thing about ideology. It's kind of bittersweet with new stuff. Old stuff goes away, but you, you still have a chance to kind of get it while you can find it. But again, I love the choice of papers too, like the little hint of typography just right there, like an advert just in the middle of nowhere. And then some text and then some, some papers. It's just, it's so good to see everything mixed and matched together. Like, what a stunning make. Absolutely beautiful. Fun, right? Fun to see all of the details just, oh, yeah. And those little match boxes to create the drawer inside the box. It's like the perfect fit, made to order. Yeah, there's that photo again, another angle of it. Cool. Brilliant make, Paula. Brilliant. Yeah, so many different things. And then here's a make that I created. So I love Photomatic. There was no, no denying that. And if you guys follow me on, uh, on Instagram, we talked about live. I've been collecting these um, kind of photo ID badges. And I had this idea in my head to kind of replicate a photo ID badge. So I took a vignette panel. I wanted to make it pretty industrial. So I just did metal, uh, metal tape around it with the 3D folder. And then I just flattened it just so it you know, wasn't so puffy, but I got the detail. And then I just went into the photomatics and just cut them all up. This was inspired by Paula again, no surprise there. A make she did, her and I talked about it. And I'm like, remember that make that you did with the photo booth and you did the thing and the thing and we couldn't find the photo, we eventually did. But the idea was taking photo booth and using photos as a background. And I'm like, I've always loved that. So I wanted to do this with, with photomatic. And so I went through and chose my favorite photomatics, grunged up each one of them, collaged them in there. So I really roughed them up, took the paper distressor and really grunged them. Uh, then I did a little framing of the Ideology tack nails and just did wire all the way around this whole thing because I just kind of felt like they all worked in the same factory or warehouse. But this was the employee badge that I wanted to create. OK, 
okay? He works for the, the ink and paint department. So he's, he's my favorite photo. That's why he's also on the front, him and, the, and my grandma. I love that. Uh, not really my grandma, but I love her. Uh, I took a little bit of ephemera, tiny attacher, and then I just wanted to do the whole, he is like an employee that works in this paint color factory. So it was live a story we're telling, and then these were all of his elements, right? The gear for the factory. This is a stencil chip. This is ideology. I love the use of all the ephemera and being able to pick different colors. There's the red section of the collage paper because I had this old brush that I just cut in half. Um, and then as I was putting these on this panel, because they don't fit perfectly, I had a space. And I'm like, either that space is going to be at the top, at the bottom, or somewhere in between. And it created the perfect amount of space for a standard ruler. So I just had an old school ruler and just cut off uh, a little bit. Just I think it was, well, it looks like two inches of that. Um, and just, no, I think we had to cut three inches, three inches off it because I cut off each end, Mario did, um, and put that on. Then there's like a little paint tube that I had. That's an old paint tube, little stitch scrap. That's ideology. That's ideology. Hammered that in. And I don't know, I just, I really had fun kind of creating this. It was almost like, I don't know, maybe you work for Disney, you know, in the ink and paint department. Uh, and then just that little found with a little bit of string around it and the clip. But, you know, again, this just allowed me to tell my story. This was the first make that I did because I wanted to go in and kind of create this whole, I don't know, this whole idea that you can get lost in creating a story. And I think you can build it off of what you see. And that also goes to why it's important to mark the things you like, watch the lives, watch the replays, follow the makers. And when you're inspired by a make, hold on to that idea. Because even if you don't have time to make it that year when that product launches, if that idea sticks in your head, like the idea of using photos as a background, Paula's make is completely different than this one, right? She used transparencies. Hers is, a, it's a completely different thought process, but it was starting with a background of photos to tell a story. Just like the, the curio cabinet I did. Hers was just more of, of a window, and, and, but it was the idea of that that could spark a whole other one. And I think that's really what uh, makes ideology so amazing.